This EPB Classic Rerun is brought to you by Calvert & Nunn Insurance in Glasgow. Calvert & Nunn Insurance not only offer a variety of policies, but are exceptional in their customer service and up-to-date quotes. Contact Vicki Bartley and her staff for any of your insurance needs. Calvert & Nunn Insurance is next to the Plaza Theater in downtown Glasgow. in just a moment but Larry what about the Scotty season so far well it's, uh, it's been an up and down season we went on a uh, started out real well against Barron County beating them and then went had to go on the road to Harrisburg and lost to a very good class A team up there came back against E-Town uh, a game we should have won here that we got beat 1914 back here against a strong Corbin team and we're, we're defeated 47 25 and then we started a district schedule with a one and three record going into the district uh, we went to Russell County and won up there and one of the better played games all year 34-14 came uh, back against a home against the Dare County won it 28-14 came back against Hart County went up at Hart County 42 to nothing Russellville here at homecoming they, they got us 24 to 7 and then of course last week in a big district game for first place The shoulder injury is uh, week to week. Nick Manders uh, injured an ankle. He's out for tonight's game. Jonathan McNabb is back. Stephen Hughes uh, slightly injured. He's been limping. Notice that in pregame warm-ups. He will start tonight. Of course, Jeff Kingry not eligible for tonight's game after last week's ejection. So battling injuries and other things, the Scotties having to dig deep for tonight's contest. That's right. Definitely not at full strength. Uh, at fullback, we're going to have a kid that hadn't played a down of varsity all year long. I don't guess uh, uh, Whitlow. And I, we're going to have to wait and see how he does. And then we're going to have to put some other people in different spots. You know, things like... Uh, uh, like uh, Jeff Kingery being out for getting thrown out of the game last week, you know, or something that you can uh, do something about. But the injuries, you can't do anything about. You just have to try to play through them. I think the telling tale for Glasgow this season, Larry, is in a couple of areas, particularly up front, because Glasgow has faced ball clubs that are bigger and stronger. Glasgow, I think, is stronger than they were last year. But once the offseason begins in the winter, I know they're going to work hard in the weight room to get even stronger, because I think that's going to tell the tale about the direction of this program. I think you're exactly right. Uh, just about every team that we've faced this year is a lot bigger, a lot stronger than we are. I don't know what the difference is, because we've been working out on weights uh, as we do every year. I don't know whether it's uh, we go at it hard enough. I don't know. But we'll, uh, we're going to find out. I think Jerry and, uh, and uh, coaching staff are committed to doing that uh, in the offseason. And if they can do that, we can get stronger. I think we'll, we're, we've got some good players coming up. And, and, I think, and I think the numbers will improve, too. Yeah, I think the numbers will improve over the next two or three years. Uh, some good football players coming up. If they can all stay eligible, if they all stay out, 
uh, I think we're going to be right back on top again. Let's look at the starting lineup for the Glasgow Scotties. And as Larry and I talked about, there are some changes tonight. Michael Moore will start at quarterback, a 6'2", 176-pound junior who wears number 19. Now slated to start at fullback is sophomore Chris Whitlow, 6'1", 166, wears number 33. At left slot, Barrett Wright, 5'11", 200-pound senior who wears number 20. Now Wright could see some action at fullback. If he does, then Dustin Plank will move to that left slot. Dust at number 11, a 5'11", 180-pound sophomore. The right slot for the Scotties is Todd Gentry, a 5'7", 131-pound junior who wears number 6. His backup is Brandon Chambers, a 5'9", 188-pound sophomore who wears number 21. Up front, Stephen Hughes starts at center, 6'3", 194 senior who wears number 51. The right guard is Lamont Rhodes, a 5'7", 249-pound sophomore who wears number 60. Good to see Jonathan McNabb back in action after a two-week absence at right tackle, 6'1", 198, senior, who wears number 71. Nick Swords could see some action there, 5'10", 240, sophomore. Jake Adwell as well up front, 5'11", 230-pound sophomore, good player, number 72. Tied in for the Scotties is Gary Pierce, 5'11", 158, junior, who wears number 86. Left side of Glasgow's offensive line, Jeremy Poland is a left guard. Think about Jeremy Poland for a moment, Larry. 178, 5'8", 178, a senior, but he goes at it hard. You've got to give him a lot of credit because we've seen some left guards or left tackles or right tackles that have been 320 pounds this year. Yeah, we sure have, and Jeremy uh, does a good job at that guard position. I think Glasgow has been noted for small guards over the years. If you you look at Donnie Falk these days, he's not small right now, but when <laughs> he was in school, he was about 160. You said that now, Larry. He was about 160 pounds, and he could play. So, uh, you know, and he's not the only one. There's been some back over the years. So Jeremy's in a one in a long line of small guards. <laughs> Left tackle is John J. Bird, a 6'1", 203-pound junior who wears number 62. And the split end is Richie Gargeron for the Glasgow Scotties, a 5'9", 179 senior who wears number 10. Nick Swords punts. Jonathan Belcher kicks. Jonathan 5'8", 180 senior. Wright and Gentry return kickoffs and punts for the Glasgow Scotties. Five seniors, four juniors, and two sophomores. 2'10", up front for Glasgow High. Now, Defensively for the Scotties. They'll go 195 up front, start six seniors, three juniors, and two sophomores. Six players go both ways as the Scotties race onto the field here at Hank Royce Stadium. The band forming a tunnel here, and the Scotties coming onto the field in their blue tops and white pants trimmed in blue with white numerals and blue helmets with the Scotty paw on the side. Robbie Huffman gets the start at nose guard tonight for the Scotties. A 6'1, 208 pound senior who wears number 54. The right guard is Michael Bragg, a 5'9, 211 pound junior who wears number 50. McNabb is a right tackle. On the left side of Glasgow's defensive front, Jeremy Poland and Stephen Hughes. Poland's a left guard, Hughes a left tackle. The rover is Richie Garzeron. You could see him up front or you could see him in the linebacking core, but Richie will be the rover. The true linebacker for the Scotties is Barrett Wright. The left quarter for the Scotties, sophomore Terry Anderson, Larry, gets his start, but Terry's seen a lot of action this year. 5'9", 172, sophomore, number 84. Chambers is a right quarter. Moore and Gentry are the safeties. The Scotties with seven players both ways. Yeah, seven players both ways. I think Monroe County is about the same. And uh, as we've said uh, before, uh, in the fourth quarter, that's when they usually wear down, and that's where we've lost a lot of football games this year gotten out of a lot of football games and I think Monroe County probably has the same problem and it just depends on who's going to be strong the strongest I think Larry let's look at other games across South Central Kentucky hello coach Clark there's Sam Clark That's right. from speak of the devil All right. <laughs> we were bragging on you coach Clark on the radio just a few minutes ago uh, he's too busy flapping his guns with cook over there <laughs> Now that's a, yeah, now that, that's an interesting situation. They both like to do that. Larry, who have we got tonight in South Central Kentucky before we take this break? Okay, well, we got Barron County against Let, Grayson let's, County. Let's talk about that. In a big district game. If Barron wins, they're going to finish third. That's if right. they lose, they probably will still qualify for the state playoffs, but Marion County would still have a chance to qualify. I think the Trojans are going to win that one, though. I think they probably will, too. Uh, I don't know a lot about Grayson County. I think they're a little better than they have been in the past. They run the wing tee. But, uh, you know, uh, it'll be a tough uh, tough job for Barron to go over there and beat them. Who else have we got, Kate Wood? Of course, we've got Allen County playing Greenwood, uh, which means nothing in the district race. Uh, Dare County and Russell County, and I don't think that has a bearing on the district race either. Hart County plays Callaway County, Caverna and Metcalf County. Now, that's a big game. Caverna still could qualify for the state of playoffs, depending on what happens between Campbellsville and Green County. That's right. Campbellsville, Green County, uh, the next game. Evanston County plays Butler County, Fort Knox, and Taylor County. Of course, you've gone over the implications of that ball. Game. We're going to watch that one closely, Matt. 
And we've got Bowling Green, Warren East, which should be not too hard for Bowling Green. And down there, we've got Warren Central and Franklin Simpson. Pick that one, Larry. And I think if uh, Warren Central beats Franklin Simpson, they've got a three-way tie for first place down there. Have you got a feeling Central may win that game? I've got a good feeling that they probably will. Franklin Simpson's best running back is out. So, okay. Uh, uh, and I can't call his name. Is right it Fred off. Bell or Spencer? Spencer is okay. the one that's out. Chad Spencer, he plays basketball for them too, I think. That's right. He, he's out of this ball game. I don't know whether he's out for the whole year, but he's out for this game. Uh, Russellville plays South Hopkins tonight. Do you believe Russellville got beat by Trigg County last week? That's well, hard to believe. Trigg County is noted for good football. They That's where have Baker been, played. They, now yeah, Baker. That's right. They have been in the state uh, finals a few times. I don't. I think they won. I think Jaggers, uh, the coach used to coach at Fort Knox, is now at uh, North Harden. Used to coach at Trigg County, and they won a state championship down there. Logan County plays Owensboro, and Bullet East plays Nelson County. And E-Town plays Larue County. We may watch that one as well. Randall tells me that Glasgow High won the toss. They've elected to receive Eddie Rose, Ronnie Gerald, and Matt Spear. The Captains for Monroe County, Jeff Kingry, Stephen Hughes, Jeremy Pollard, and Jonathan McNabb, captains for the Glasgow Scotties. We'll return with the start of this game in one minute on WCLU Sports. Not so complicated. As simple as can be. Ooh, you're my Dr. Pepper. You set my spirit free. Oh, oh you're the part of me. That's the heart. Pepper, just what the doctor ordered. We're here with Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, to guess what Dave's putting on Wendy's newest chicken sandwich. Call now. You're on the air. Rutabagas. Rutabagas are big. Not big enough. Hello? Anchovies. Nope. Dave, end the suspense. Well, I decided to go with something classy. So we're topping our whole chicken breast filet with three strips of bacon, melted Swiss, and a tangy sauce. And we're calling it Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. Mmm, Wendy's new chicken bacon Swiss. Hello? I'm telling you, Rutabagas. I'll pass that along. At participating Wendy's for a limited time. Larry, the keys in this football game is the Scotties battle Monroe County right here on 14 carat go, WCLU, Glasgow, Kentucky. Well, the key for Glasgow defensively, of course, is to stop Lorenzo Tooley. Don't let him break the long one. We need to take care of the football on offense and we don't make any turnovers. Uh, take possession of the football, grind it out, and get some points out of it on the offensive end. If we can't stop Tooley, though, it's going to be a long night. If we let him break more than one run, I think we're going to be in a lot of trouble. As as I expected, as I look down to my right, a big crowd from Monroe County. They support their football teams very well, and they've got a big old crowd tonight. Not a bad crowd from Glasgow. Hope a few more folks will come out as this game gets underway. Yeah, they do have a big crowd, and they're here in full force, and I'm, I guarantee you they'll be boisterous before the night is over. I tell you, one of the wildest games that I've broadcast since I've been back in Glasgow was about, what, three years, four years ago when that the Scotties came back from a 26-0 deficit. That was 19 the Falcons. Four years ago to beat the Falcons 27 to 26 when they had Pitkett and Ross. Probably the greatest comeback in Glasgow history, down 26 nothing and came back and won 27 26. Monroe County moves to your right in the first quarter. The Glasgow Scotties to your left. Monroe County with white tops and dark blue pants with blue numerals. Gerald set to kick off from his 40. Barrett right the deep man at the 10 yard line and the kick will come to right and he'll take it at the 11. Hands it at the 15, right at the 20, right at the 25. Right breaks another tackle, brings it up to about the 28 yard line where the Scotties will have it. First and 10, pretty good coverage for Monroe County, but not bad field position for the Glasgow Scotties as they'll have the football first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And making the stop for the Falcons is Jared Bartley, a 5'9", 140-pound sophomore after a 16-yard kickoff return by Glasgow High. Right out on the left side is Richie Gargeron. Backfield is in the double slot. Monroe County stacking six bit at the line of scrimmage. Has Moore on the fumble. He lost the football. Let's see who's got it at the 23. Monroe County's got it. And a big break for the Falcons as it looked like on a bootleg that Moore just dropped the football and Monroe County falls on it and they're in business. Not a good start at all for the Glasgow Scotties. They'll have it first and 10 at the Scotty 23-yard line. That was Jeremy McClendon, number 68 it fell on that football. I don't know what happened to Michael that time, but it just, as soon as he got the snap and he started to roll to his left, he just lost the football. I don't know what happened. It didn't look like he hit anybody. It looked like he just dropped the football and, and uh, Monroe County right there. Michael almost got back on it, but McClendon beat him to the football. Well, here come the Falcons. 
Grace is a quarterback. Eye formation behind him, Wood and Tooley. One wide out on the right side is Gross. Scotty, seven man front. As a handoff comes to Wood, breaks one tackle, scoots inside the 23 down to about the 22 and a half, or about the 22 yard line. Gain of about two. This drive starting at the 24, second and eight, as he banged it off right tackle. Barrett Wright's first stop. And Barrett is the linebacker for the Scotties. And he'll have to play big defensively, I think, if Glasgow's going to stop Monroe County's offense. I think you're right. He's our fastest, not our fastest back, but uh, one of our, like Todd Gentry may be a little faster than he. But Barrett's stronger and uh, moves very well. And he may be the only one that can run Tooley down if he gets loose. Floyd wide out on the left side. Gross on the right side as the handoff comes to Tooley. Tooley! Got maybe a yard down to the 21 as he tried to rip it up the middle, but he ran into a pile there. And he stacked up after maybe a yard, but that's it. Third and seven as he tried to crash over the right side, but Stephen Hughes took him down at the 21. Stephen's a 6'3", 194 senior tackle. Third and seven for the Falcons at the Scotty 21. Robbie Huffman got a piece of him from a nose tackle position right there, and then Richie Gajeron helped out Stephen Hughes on that tackle. Huffman wears number 43 as Grace calling the signals. Eye formation, receiver split left and right. Scotty's six man front as Grace drops back. Grace, pretty good protection. Here's a throw. It is going to be picked off by Gentry. Gentry picks it off at about the two yard line, and the Scotties will have it. First and 10. A short pass intended for Gross. Gentry picks it off. That's the good news. The bad news is Glasgow with horrible field position at the two yard line, but I'd rather have horrible field position to give up six points. You're exactly right. That was uh, way underthrown uh, to the receiver down on the left side. Was it he a step up and a throw? A really? He stepped back and it looked like a fake on the out pattern and then he went long. He threw it short. Todd Gentry played it just exactly right. The only problem was when he caught it, he just didn't have anywhere to run because the receiver was right with him and he's on about the two yard line. Garcheron comes out and Huffman looks like he is at a tight end position for the Scotties as Moore. First and 10 at the two yard line. Breaking outside, scooting the football, past the five up to about the eight yard line for Glasgow High. He's going to be, I believe, is that Barrett Wright? Five yard pickup, second and five. Barrett Wright did scamper for about five yards for the Scotties before he was taken down. Almost a six-yard gain, second and four. We've got another bunch of jerseys that you can't see here. James Lawrence made the stop for the Falcons, second and five. As the handoff comes to Wright, scampers past the 10, or up to about the 10-yard line, just a little bit shy. And he's going to be about a yard short of the first down, about a yard and a half. Now they move the marker back to the nine, so he's going to be two yards short of the first down as he tried to rip it off right tackle. And that time, Matt Spear brought him down, a 5'8", 190 senior. Third and two for the Scotties, just shy of the 10-yard line. They run out of the double slot. The Eddins are tight, but Roe County almost with nine men at the line of scrimmage as Michael Moore, quick pitch, comes to Barrett Wright, cuts outside. He's got the first down. As Wright, quick pitch, bangs it past the 10, past the 15, up to the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Scotties. And Larry with 8.41 left after an eight-yard burst on the quick pitch as he cut to the left with 8.41 left. I think that was a very big first down for the Scotties. They move it out to about the 18-yard line. Barrett and right, three carries, 16 yards, first and 10 for the Scotties. Stop made by Adam Rouse, 6'1", 200 pounds, senior, a linebacker. Big first down there, and we got it by a good margin. Here comes the handoff to Ty Gentry, cuts inside at the 20. Gentry's got it at the 25. Gentry up to about the 28-yard line, may have the first down on the misdirection handoff. And Glasgow's offensive front doing a good job of pushing Monroe County off the ball. In fact, Glasgow, who got an advantage, and this is rare, they've got a 12-pound advantage on Monroe's defensive front as Adam Rouse has his second stop. Gain of 10. It's first and 10 for the Glasgow Scotties at the 28-yard line. This drive, this drive started at the two-yard line. Two wideouts on the right side of Gentry and Garjerome. Backfields at the double slot. Clark is at a motion. As the handoff comes to Barrett Wright, Bright is, he is stopped after he takes it up to the 30-yard line, and he was laid back. That's Mr. Gerald's right there, Ronnie Gerald's. He's one of the toughest competitors on this team, on Monroe County's team, and he laid Barrett Wright a good lick. Two-yard game for Wright, second and eight. But the Scotties moving the football with 7.57 left. They had the first quarter, no score, but Monroe County in Glasgow here at Hank Roy Stadium. Well, Glasgow's doing exactly what they need to do, grind, at it, grind it out on the ground. 
take some time off the clock and pick up first downs. Of course, you've got to score at the end of the drive, though. Baird Wright is a fullback. Clark is in motion to the far side as a quick pitch comes to Wright. Gets outside at the 30. Wright up in it at the 35, 36, still carrying tacklers. And we've got a mask. flag at the 36. And if that's a face mask, that's going to give Glasgow a first down, Kay Wood. Lorenzo Tooley got him. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Lorenzo Tooley was the man that tackled him. I don't know whether he gets one who got the face mask or not. Baird Wright's rushed for about 800 yards this season for the Scotties. And grabbing the face mask to cost, so the Scotties are going to get another first down, and the football is going to be moved into Monroe County field position. Six-yard gain for Wright. 7.30 left in the first quarter. After Monroe County's grace threw an interception, the Scotties began this drive at the two. Now they've marched it to Monroe County's 48-yard line. Another first down, Randall tells me, that is, I believe, the third first down of this game for the Scotties. First and 10 at the Monroe County 48. You're talking about a big turn event, turnaround. They had the ball staring at a touchdown and then the turnover, and we've moved it right on down the field. Here's Barrett right at the 35, right at the 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. And that's where he stopped at the five-yard line. Almost broke it free for a touchdown, but as it is, about a 43-yard jump down the field. First and go for the Scotties at the five-yard line. Kitty oh, brought him down, 5'8", 150. 50 freshman. I tell you what, that was a burst of speed by Barry Wright to get into the secondary, and then a bigger burst of speed by Kenny Hull to run him down. 44-yard pickup from Barrett Wright. He's carried it six times for 68 yards. Another first down for the Scotties. That's their fourth first and goal at the five-yard line. Lasco try to take the lead early in this game. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter. They're out of the double slot. The ends are tight. Monroe Caddy almost with everybody at the line of scrimmage. Here's a handoff to Gentry. Gentry crashes his way inside the five down to about the three-yard line. It's going to be second and goal at that point. Took it outside, Larry, and then swerved back inside and picked up about, well, he's, he's almost down to about the two-yard line. I think he picked up three on that play. He was taken down by Lorenzo Tooley, 5'10", 150, junior, his second stop. Larry, the Scotties have to punch it in right here. If they do, it would be a 98-yard drive, their longest of the season. That's right, exactly the longest one of the season. Clark and Gentry are the slots. Barrett Wright's a fullback. Monroe County almost 11 minutes the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Wright gets the football. He does. Will Wright take it home? He battles. Does he score? Yes! Touchdown, Glasgow! What a great effort by Barrett Wright. And I mean, he earned it the old-fashioned way. He worked hard for it. And the Scotties lead 6 to nothing. A 98-yard drive. 6-17 left in the first quarter. That drive, Larry, just about as impressive as I've seen all year. It is. That was a, a very good uh, interception by uh, Todd Gentry on the other end, and then we drove it right straight down the field. Nine plays, K. Wood. 98-yard drive. Belcher comes in to attempt the extra point. Hughes will snap. Garcheron will hold. Glasgow trying to take a 7-0 lead. Here's a kick from Belcher. The boot from Belcher is no good. Apparently, it's wide to the left, although I did not get an indication from the official. Looked like it was good from this vantage point. I've been fooled before. 6-17 left in the first quarter. Glasgow 6, Monroe County nothing. Back after this message on 14 Karat Gold Sports. You already know that the Glasgow Electric Plan Board is a public power company keeping your electric rates as low as possible. Did you know their superior cable TV service is handled the same way? That keeps rates low and brings competition in cable TV service to Glasgow, which is good for everyone. Support your hometown. The Electric Plan Board works for you 24 hours a day to bring you reliable electric service and superior cable TV service. Call them at 651-8341 anytime. 14 karat gold, WCLU, Jim Moody, Larry Alexander, Randall Cook, Bruce Tribune, Henry Royce, here at Glasgow High. Six-nothing lead for the Glasgow Scotties, Larry, on what I think may be the prettiest drive so far this football season. It was. It was uh, a good drive all on the ground, with the exception of the penalty. The penalty really did help uh, on Barrett Wright on a face mask, and uh, that got us set up in their territory, then a long run by uh, Barrett Wright to get the thing down inside the 10. Tuli is standing at the 11 yard let's see Belcher looks like he's going to angle his kick to the Scotty sideline right here and here's the boot it is a short kick it will be taken by Geralds at the 31 Geralds has it at the 35 Geralds brings it up to the 41 yard line where he's finally stopped by a Scotty looked like Brandon Tooley Tooley was there and seems like Tooley always makes a lot of stops on kickoffs Brandon for the Scotties a 5'9 174 pound freshman it's got to be first and 10 for the Falcons at their own 42 yard line 
10-yard kickoff return. Glasgow leading six to nothing. Well, uh, you'll see that all night long. If we can score, we're, we're, when we kick off, we're going to kick it short. We won't try to kick it downfield where Tooley can get his, Lorenzo Tooley, I'm saying, can get his hands on it because he's capable of taking it back as he did against Allen County for a touchdown. A mix-up for Monroe County, and they call a timeout. 6.02 left in the first quarter. Scotty six, Monroe County nothing. We'll return after in one minute on WCLU Sports. On the one hand, you really want and need a getaway vacation, but your practical side keeps telling you that there's some home improvement that must be made or you need a new car. Wait, there's a way to get both. New Farmers National Bank is giving away free family vacations. Take advantage of a new loan for any purpose at New Farmers National Bank and get a great getaway at one of five fabulous resorts. The Las Vegas Flamingo Hilton, the Hilton Inn Gateway in Orlando, the Clarion Hotel in New York, the Radisson Suite Resort on Hilton Head, or the Edgewater Hotel in Gatlinburg. You'll enjoy deluxe accommodations for two adults and children occupying the same room as parents stay free. First morning continental breakfast for two. Discount coupons to use while on your stay. Even the green fees at the resorts with courses. So go ahead, get the home improvements or the new car with a loan from New Farmers National Bank and a getaway vacation to boot. But I'm a loan balance and term required. Other stipulations apply. Like any great vacation, this offer won't last forever. So hurry to any New Farmers location for complete details or call 651-6141. Then get away. Compliments of New Farmers National Bank. Equal housing lender member FDIC. Monroe County on first and 10. Wood trying to run off left tackle, Larry. He got maybe a yard, but Glasgow's middle front doing a good job. Who made the stop for the Scotties that time? Second and nine at the 43 for the Falcons. Jonathan McNabb, 6'1", 198-pound senior, playing his final home game for the Scotties. It's like Brandon Tooley's in at the, line, at the linebacking position for the Scotties as Barrett Ryan is on the bench right now as a quick pitch comes to Tooley. Cuts outside. Tooley at the 45. Tooley at midfield. Tooley at the Scotty 45. Finally pushed out of bounds around the 40-yard line. That's the acceleration that Tooley can give you, Larry, and on the quick pitch, instant yardage as Tooley takes it down to the Scotty 40-yard line on the toss sweep to the left, and it's going to be first and 10 for Monroe County at the Scotty 40 after a 17-yard pickup. Tooley with great, great speed on that first or second step. Brandon Tooley, his second stop. Yeah, it took Brandon Tooley. had to go downfield from his linebacker spot uh, a long way to push him out of bounds, and he had to angle on him. I thought he was gone that time when he got around the corner. Falcons run out of the eye formation. Grace calling the signal. Scotty, seven-man front. As Grace on the handoff. Here's Wood. Wood has stopped after maybe a yard. He got it down to the 40-yard line, but that's it. The running's been tough for Adam Wood up the middle, a 5'10", 180-pound sophomore. Glasgow's defensive front's doing a pretty good job right now. Second and nine after a one-yard gain. Jonathan McNabb, 6'1", 198 senior, makes the stop. I talked to coaching staff last night, and they think the, they line up in the eye formation, but they run a form of the veer. When they fake to the fullback, then they try to run the little option out to, uh, to Tooley. They haven't done that yet, but uh, they said the first thing to stop, of course, is the fullback. You can't let him beat you. Gerald says a new fullback. Receiver split left and right as Grace will drop back. Grace throws out to his right. Grace is going to throw the football. The pass is overthrown. It is incomplete at the 30-yard line. A slant pattern intended for McShane Bartley, third at nine. It wasn't because he wasn't open. The tight end came from the left side across the field about 10 yards, uh, came all the way to the right side of the field. The pass was just overthrown. Third and nine for the Falcons at the Scotty 40. 436 left in the first quarter. Glasgow on a 98-yard drive. Barrett Wright on a three-yard or on a two-yard touchdown romp, giving the Scotties a 6-0 lead. Right out on the right side is Cloyd. On the left side is Gross backfield is in the I formation. Woods a fullback. Tooley's a tailback. And Tooley, or Grace, will drop back. Grace's pass comes to Tooley. Tooley breaks outside. Has it at the 35. Tooley at the 30. Tooley has it at the 25. Finally pushed out of bounds by Scotty at about the 20-yard line. Just a little screen pass, Larry, as they almost got to Grace. McNabb almost sacked him along with Hughes. But once you got, once Tooley catches it in open field, he is almost impossible to stop. And on a little screen pass, he takes it down to the Scotty 24-yard line. That's where he's ruled out of bounds. Pass completion. 
of 16 yards. He's finally pushed out of bounds by Garzeron. First and 10 for the Falcons at the Scotty 24-yard line. That was a very good call by Monroe County. Uh, they let the line through, rushing the passer, and set up the little screen out to the left side to Thule. And that's exactly what you got to do when you got speed. You get it to your fastest man, let him pick his hole, and he's uh, as good as there is around this area doing that. Grace with the eye formation as a handoff comes to the fullback, Gerald, who rips it down the middle, past the 24 to about the 22-yard line. They said receivers left and right. The Scotties had seven minutes, a lot of scrimmage. Gerald's picked up maybe a yard as forward a progress mark down at the 23. Second and nine, Mike Bragg stopped. I've been impressed with Glasgow's work against the fullback. Yeah, the work against the fullback's been very good. Uh, I can remember one game where it wasn't Corbin. We couldn't stop anybody up the middle that night. I got a feeling Mr. Tooley's going to get this one as Bartley and Gross brought out on the right side. Here comes the toss to Tooley. He is slowed down. Is Tooley going to be stopped? Nope, he backs up. He is stopped after uh, maybe a yard gain on the toss sweep. He got it back at the 30, Larry. Scotty's had a chance to drop him there. He escaped from that tackler, but he manages to get back to the line of scrimmage as Glasgow strung him out. He'll run out about sooner or later, though, <laughs> if they can keep stringing, stringing him out. In fact, he may have lost a yard, I think. It's going to be third and ten, and give the Scotties credit. They didn't let him turn the quarter, forced him outside, and Jeremy Poland wrote him down. Richie Gajeron was the one that made the play. He came in from his uh, rover position on the blitz and uh, almost had Thule just as he handed the ball off, but he couldn't drag him down, and that slowed him up enough for Jeremy Poland to get him. Scotty, seven minutes the line of scrimmage as Grace will drop back. Grace is being rushed. Here's a long throw. The pass is going to be caught. That's for the, let's see. It is caught for the touchdown. Nice catch. And I believe number 86 grabbed that. Brandon Wagner. That was a great catch. Beautiful throw and a beautiful catch. And the Falcons tie it at six. That is a 24-yard touchdown pass. Diving catch by Wagner. And now the Falcons could take the lead. That was a well-thrown ball just over the outstretched arms of uh, the defensive man, and he had to stretch out as far as he could go and dive to catch it, and he did. Caught it right in his fingertips in the end zone. Geralds will try to tack on the extra point and give the Falcons a lead right here with 3.01 left of the first quarter. Give them credit, a 58-yard drive. They converted on some big third-down plays in that drive. A couple of third and long situations. Here's Geralds. He'll try the extra point. Extra point by Geralds is good. It's Monroe County 7, Glasgow 6, 3.01 left in the first quarter. We'll return after this message on WCLU Sports. Coming to video at Cinema To Go, October 28th for the first time ever. Walt Disney's masterpiece, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, held by the New York Times as a landmark in the history of animation. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs tells the timeless tale of a beautiful princess who's forced to flee from her wicked stepmother, the Queen. It's up to seven lovable dwarfs and a charming prince to break the Queen's evil spell. Now, at Cinema To Go, you can own the original masterpiece, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, on sale October 28th for a limited time only. Rated G general audiences. Cinema To Go in the South Gate Plaza and Barron River Plaza in Glasgow. Give the Monroe County Falcons credit, Larry. On two third and long, they're able to get number one a first down and then the touchdown. And Grace, pretty tough quarterback. Only a sophomore. Pretty tough quarterback. And he tossed that to Brandon Wagner, a 24-yard touchdown pass. And Gerald's will kick off. It's a low line drive kick that will be taken by Garjaron. Has it at the 20. Garjaron at the 25. Garjaron cuts to the outside. Gets a block. Garjaron's got it at the 45. Garjaron at the oh, 40 or 35. Strung down at the 39 yard line. And let me tell you what. <laughs> somebody made a touchdown saving tackle for Monroe County. That was number 83. Adam Rouse. Boy, he grabbed him by the, <laughs> by the uh, jersey and pulled him down. Had not been for that, he would have been gone. 23 yard kickoff return. First and 10 for the Scotties at the 40. Garza Rome was one tackler away from returning that for six points. Here come the Scotties. Whitlow is back at fullback. Baird right. And Gentry the slot backs. Monroe County six man front. As the handoff comes to Gentry. Has it at the 40. Gentry cuts outside at the 45. Gentry breaks another tackle and takes it near midfield where the Scotties should be close to a first down. Nice run by Gentry that time, Larry. Great second effort on the near sideline. And the Scotties should have a first down. The official 
I don't know if he's going to ask for a measurement. He doesn't have to. First and 10 for the Glasgow Scotties at the Monroe County 49 and a half yard line. 11 yard pickup by Gentry. Stop made by Scotty McMillan, 5'9", 140 junior. First and 10 for the Scotties just past midfield. Yeah, it was just a little pitch play from the right slot. He came to the left side, got a good block from Barrett Wright out here, and he also got a good block from uh, Richie Gargeron who was out here on the end, and that sealed everybody off, and Todd got out and got enough room for the first down. Here's the double reverse sweep to Barrett Wright. Cuts past the 45. Wright still on his feet. Still carrying tackler, still battling down to about the 40-yard line. He's going to be close to a first down again. Just a step beyond the 40. He may be a little bit short depending on the speed. Spot. Boy, is he running that football hard on the reverse sweep that time? Takes it down to the Monroe County 40. I think he's going to be about a half yard short of the first down. I told one of the Monroe County play, uh, fans at work today that I thought this game would be high scoring, and the way it's going, it may be. 220 left first quarter. Barrett Wright, eight carries, 79 yards. And Larry? Glasgow really having an effective running game tonight. They sure do. Well, they've got, they're going up against a line that, that uh, is equal to their size, and somebody probably, a line that probably won't wear them down as the game goes along because they're not just big and strong. So, uh, you know, against teams like that, we can run the football we have all year long. He's about a foot short. It's going to be second and less than a yard. Monroe County 7, Glasgow 6. A good first quarter so far. Scotty's with a 90 the Falcons with a 58-yard drive. Uh, I th figured that we would come out throwing the football a little bit more tonight, but so far we haven't had to. Scotty's out of the double slot. Garzeron wide out on the left side. Michael Moore calling the signals against the seven-man front as Moore will drop back. Moore, long pass for Garzeron. He's open. Garzeron, oh, almost intercepted at the 15-yard line. And a break for the Scotties because that ball was almost picked off by Scotty McMillan. I, if the throw had, had just a little more zip on it, Garzeron would have had six points. A foot further, a foot taller the pass would have been. It would have been six points. Uh, Richie would have had to outrun Lorenzo Tooley to the end zone to get that six <laughs> points. But uh, a great play by Scotty McMillan right there to knock that ball down. And a good call by the Scotties, too, on second and short. It was. That was a good call. I like to see that. Here we go, third and about a foot for the Scotties. Monroe County, six man front defensively. As a handoff comes to Gentry, he's got the first down at the 37-yard line as he crosses over the line of scrimmage, and he's got about maybe about four yards and maybe down to the 36 as it's in front of us, right in front of the uh, Scotty bench. A little difficult to see. Let's see where they spot it. I'll call it the 37 of Monroe County. Still a three-yard pickup on the toss sweep to the left. Jeremy McClendon makes the stop. First and 10 for the Scotties at the Falcon 37. That's five first downs for Glasgow High by the rush and one by the penalty. A minute 57 left in the first quarter. Double slot for the Scotties. Dustin Clark is in for Glasgow High. As the handoff comes to Barrett Wright, racing his way past the 30. Wright at the 25. Wright carrying tacklers down to the 21-yard line. And right now, Barrett Wright is unstoppable. Looked like Tooley and Wood were both there. And who's going to get credit for that stop? Adam Wood got the, got the initial hit. Well, Glasgow's really hurting Monroe up the middle, aren't they, Larry? They sure are. Uh, the, uh, we've moved Barrett Wright to fullback. We took Chris Whitlow out of the ballgame that time, moved Barrett into the fullback slot. And if Monroe County will notice, the only time a fullback has carried the football is when Barrett moves to that position. So it doesn't look like they're going to give Chris the ball very many times. 16-yard pickup for Barrett Wright. He's carried it nine times for, I believe, 95 yards. At the 21, the Scotties have it first and 10. Out of the double slot, the handoff comes to Gentry. Gentry has it at the 20. Gentry still on his feet. What a spin move by Gentry as he takes it down to the 10-yard line. But there's a flag. My, oh, my, at the 17. Could be a clip or a hold on the Scotties. I got a feeling it's against Glasgow, whatever it is. No. Nope. No, it's a face mask against Oh, Monroe that's County. a break right there. That's a second one of this game. It was certainly thrown in the vicinity of a clip or a hold. Did you see that spin move that Gentry made at about the 15-yard line? Yeah, no, Todd's about 100 and what? 130. 130 and uh, moves very well side to side. He's real quick with his feet, and he did a real good, uh, just a, a reverse <coughs> pivot if you were playing basketball right there. 10-yard gain, 5-yard penalty, half the distance to the goal, and that's the second penalty of this game for Monroe County. First and go for the Scotties at the 5-yard line. McMillan with the stop. 
And here come the Scotties, Larry, trying to bounce right back after Monroe County takes a one-point lead, first in goal at the five. It would do a lot for the confidence if we can put it in the end zone here. Last go in the almost in the full house backfield as the handoff comes to Barrett Wright. Wright drives, no skip in six. Touchdown, Scotty. I don't believe anybody touched him, Nobody did Nobody did touch him, I don't think. I mean, Glasgow's offensive line is whipping Monroe County's defensive front. And it's 12 to six. I'm sorry, 12 to seven. Seven play, 61-yard drive. And Barrett Wright scores from five yards out. And the Scotties lead, Larry, 12 to seven. And right here, I think it's very critical that Glasgow convert on this two-point try. Michael Moore leads the team up to the line of scrimmage. Monroe County, eight men. It's Glasgow in the double slot as Moore will try to pass. Here it is, the pass is, is it caught? No. Garzron almost hung on to it, but the pass is incomplete. He was battling. Looked like Gerald's was there and McMillan was there. It was right there. It was thrown well. The pass well. was very, very catchable. Scotty's regained the lead 12 to 7 over Monroe County with 57 seconds left in the first quarter. Back after this one message on WCLU Sports. One of the toughest jobs if you're remodeling a home or building a new home is to get all the moldings and the trim to come out looking just like you want it. Maybe you've added a wall or taken out a cabinet and you just can't seem to get all that molding to match up because either it's not made anymore or you can't find enough of it. Well, did you know that at Square Deal Lumber Company's shop there in Cave City, they actually make hardwood moldings? It's true. Maybe you're uh, redoing an older home. Maybe an architect has drawn a particular design up that uh, they'd like for you to use in your design or construction. Well, at Square Deal Lumber Company, they can make that molding in poplar or oak, cherry, walnut, any species that you'd like. They can do it. Square Deal uses only clear, high-grade lumber, which means there's not any finger joints that are going to show through the finish or that won't come apart later on down the road. And they're priced competitively because they make them right there in the shop in Cave City. So bring your plans, bring your sample, and realize that the buck stops with the folks at Square Deal Lumber Company in Cave City. They can get the job done. Jonathan Belcher set to kick off. Scotty's lead 12 to 7 over Monroe County. As here's a kick. The kick is going to go out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Monroe County will, I'm sure, take the football at that point. Will they take it at the 43, Larry, or will they get it at the 35? Well, they'll, they'll get it where the football went out of bounds or the 35. I think they get a choice, but uh, it'll be on where the ball went out of bounds if it's up above the 35. All right, so that's about the 43. That's where they started their last drive. First and, well, let's no, see, nope, they're going to make Glasgow kick over. They're going to kick again? I didn't know they had the option. Procedure penalty against Glasgow. Oh, Melcher will kick off from the 35. Let's see, Tooley is standing, Larry, at his 27. I thought they might try to move him to either one corner, possibly. He's looking over toward well, the sideline. I'm sure the Glasgow coaching staff and Mr. Jonathan Belcher are out there looking to see where number 20 lines up. <laughs> Everybody is. <laughs> to see where they're going to kick the football. Larry, give that offensive line credit. Really doing a good job. They are, and uh, they have done a good job all year long, especially in the first quarter and the second quarter Jonathan when they've been uh, you know, real fresh. Hopefully they're going to sustain that all night tonight. After the five-yard penalty, I believe that's the first penalty Glasgow's been called for in this game. Belcher kicks off from the 35. Tooley is standing. Well, he's standing kind of deep at his 15-yard line. Here's a kick. High overhead boot. That's going to be angled toward the out-of-bounds line, and it does go out-of-bounds at the 22-yard line. Now, could they force Glasgow to kick it again? We'll see. Oh, well, I thought it was uh, automatically on the 35 when you kicked it out of bounds, but they're going to have a, they're going to make us kick again. Legal procedure indicated against Glasgow. And they will kick from the 30. Well, Glasgow can't, in a way, they can't continue to do this, Larry, because they're going to continue to kick deeper and deeper in their own field position. Yeah, I think uh, pro uh, the best thing to do probably from the first kickoff is probably try to kick it onside and at least, you know, try to cover it yourself and make them uh, fall on it right there close. If you want to give it to them this close uh, to midfield anyway, you might as well try the onside kick. Now Belcher kicks from his 30-yard line. As he's kicked the last two out of bounds. Tooley is standing at his 20. He's standing far back. I don't know if they might have a play on if they can receive it or not, Cable. I don't, I don't know whether Jonathan can kick it that far or not on, on the tee. Here's a kick. Well, Tooley's going to get it. No, an up pass got it at the 25. They get it to the 30. Trying to cut to the outside at the 40-yard line. Near mid 
field at the Scotty 45-40. Finally take it out of bounds around the Glasgow 35-yard line is number 15, Kitty Hull. Did you see a clip somewhere? I saw, I saw one on Richie Garzarone, but no flag went down. Brandon Chambers made the tackle on the sideline. Well, there is a flag down, and I bet it's going to be against Glasgow. It's on the Monroe County sideline. It could be a late hit. Versatile foul against the Scotties, and it's going to be. And Larry Monroe County is going to start this drive at about the Scotty 20. <laughs> so a disastrous pretty, situation right there for Glasgow. Pretty decent field position, wouldn't you say? I'd say it's very good, and it wasn't Thule. It was Kitty Hull, a 5'8", 150-pound freshman. And he is not slow himself. Oh, he's not. First and 10 for the Falcons at the Scotty 20-yard line. Second penalty, I'm sorry, third penalty, 25 yards for the Scotties. So this is the third time in the first quarter Monroe County's had the football in Glasgow field position. The first time Grace threw an interception. He fired a touchdown pass the last time, and here we go. Number three opportunity. I wouldn't doubt that they don't try to throw one right off the start here, right after the big turnover, right after the big kickoff return. They've got Bartley, Bartley and Gross on the right side as Grace on the quarterback keeper. Has it past the 20, Grace at the 15, Grace at the 10. Grace inside the 10-yard line at the Scotty 9, first and goal. Grace running the quarterback option well that time and picked up about 11 yards. Really closer to the 8 as it's a 12-yard burst. First and goal for the Falcons at the Scotty 8-yard line. 33 seconds to go. Your prediction is going to be true. It looks like it's going to be a high scoring game as Jeremy Pola makes his second stop. Well, that's what happens right there when you're uh, concentrating on Lorenzo Tooley so much. They had him covered for the pitch, but the quarterback uh, kept it, which he should have, and got very good yardage. They've got two wideouts on the left side, Cloyd and Gross. Scotty, seven minutes at the line of scrimmage. High formation with Geralds and Tooley. As a handoff will come to Tooley. Cuts inside. Tooley drives past the five down to about the three-yard line where it's going to be second and goal and the first quarter is going to come to an end. Ball's going to be spotted at the two so it's going to be a gain of about six yards. The first quarter is over. At the end of one quarter, Glasgow 12, Monroe County 7. Matt, if you'll check on the uh, Barron County game for us in just a little bit, we'll be back after these messages. It's one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. John's Pizza, some kind of serious. I call my papa, mm, Papa John's. Mm, mm. So call your papa, oh, oh, Papa John's. Now that's serious pizza. Call your papa at 6517775. And this is Matt Gum, WCLU Sports. Got a few scores to pass along to you. E-Town 21, LaRue County 14 at the half. The game you're listening to here, Glasgow 12, Monroe County 7. And a baseball score here for you, Fort Knox 2, Taylor County nothing at the half. Strange score here, but that's the score. I'll pass it back out, give you scores later. Here's Jim Moody. Thank you, Wow, <laughs> things are going almost our way anyway. I can't believe Fort Knox doesn't have a bigger lead on Taylor County. I can't either. And Taylor e County may be a good team. E-Town has to beat Rue County, is that correct? That's and, right. And they're ahead 21-14, so things are almost going our way. Glasgow, 139 yards rushing, Monroe County, 41. Monroe County, 40 yards through the air. They've got 81 total yards. Glasgow, 139. Glasgow, eight first downs. Monroe with three. Thank you, Randall and Bruce. Second and goal at the two for the Falcons. As they run out of the power eye. Grace calling signals as Grace gives it to Wood. Wood is going to be dragged down. Back at about the three-yard line. Barrett Wright took him down. Or Tooley, I'm sorry. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what we've got, Larry. Richie Gajeron made a good tackle right there. Oh, him out, but he got a face mask when he did it. Tough break for the Scotties. That'll give them a first down, will it not? Well, it was first down and goal anyway. It, was, it? it was second and second goal. Second and goal. I don't think that's an automatic first okay, down. Okay, no. okay. I believe you're right. It is. It's still second and goal at about the two. So basically, it's just like the play wasn't run. He did he stopped lose. him at the four. I think he did lose a couple yards. Right, and then they mark half the distance to the goal. 
We've had how many? Three face masks gone so far in this game? Three or four? I think three. Two on Glasgow, one on Monroe. They've got two wideouts on the left side, second and goal at the three. Here's a handoff. And ranging for the score is going to be Wood on the fullback dive. He just barely got it, but Monroe leads Glasgow 13 to 12. And again, great kickoff return started this drive. And the Falcons lead 13 to 12. This was, I believe, a 20-yard drive. And Gerald's will cut in to attempt the extra point. Larry, this is where the extra point department has hurt the Scotties. They failed on two conversion attempts, and they already trailed by one. Could be a two-point deficit if Gerald's knocks it in. Bad snap. Up, oh, Grace will pick it up. Grace will try to run, and he's going to score. Two-point conversion by Grace on a bad snap. I don't believe that was a fake. I don't think it was either. I think it was a bad snap, and he just pulled it back and uh, picked it up, went around the right side, and nobody was there. Two-point conversion, good. Josh Grace with the run. And Monroe County leads Glasgow 15 to 12 with 11.31 left in the first half. Back after this message on 14 Carat Gold Sports. South Central Bank is now happy to be open in the Valley. The Happy Valley office of South Central Bank is now open, bringing full service banking to this thriving economic and residential area. South Central's Happy Valley office is a state-of-the-art facility with convenient lobby hours from 9 till 3 Monday through Friday and Saturdays 8 till 1. Three speedy drive through lanes are open from 8 till 5 Monday through Friday and 8 till 1 on Saturdays. In fact, South Central is proud to announce that in celebration, the Pritchardsville and Park City offices join the Happy Valley office with expanded Saturday hours, 8 till 1 every Saturday. The Happy Valley office of South Central Bank makes banking easy. You can open a new account, see a loan officer, make deposits and withdrawals. Everything you expect from your hometown bank is now available from our Happy Valley office. Stop in and see manager Ron Thomas. He's proud of his staff and this new facility. Continuing to grow in your direction with the opening of the Happy Valley office. We're South Central Bank. Member FDIC Equal Opportunity Lender. Nice return by Barrett Wright. Beautiful kickoff by Gerald. Took Barrett Wright back to the five-yard line and he returns at 25 yards to his 30 where James Ford brings him down. 5'10", 165 junior. First and 10 for the Scotties at the 30. Well, both teams, Larry, have scored on their last two possessions, but Monroe County with an extra point and a two-point conversion, and, and, they, and they lead the Scotties 15 to 12. Yeah, it looks like the defense can't stop anybody on either side tonight. Here's Todd Gentry, tries to cut outside. He stopped that time. Maybe he got a yard up to the 31 as he tried to cut left, but Monroe stopped him at his tracks. That's one of the few times that Monroe has stopped the Glasgow Scotty rushing attack. Jeremy McClendon's second tackle. Really no gain. They didn't give him a yard. No gain on the play. Second and 10 for the Scotties at the 30. Yeah, they met him right at the line of scrimmage and just kept running him backwards, and uh, somebody finally threw him to the ground. But they the gave him forward progress to the line of scrimmage. Scotties with the split backfield. Whitlow into Barrett Wright against the seven-man front. Toss sweep comes to Barrett Wright. Toss a cut outside. Takes it past the 30 up to the 32-yard line. But Monroe County's defense fired up as the left side of their defensive front doing a good job that time. Stopping Barrett Wright after a, about a two-yard gain. It's going to be third and eight. Stop made by Matthew Clarkson, 5'9", 220-pound junior. That was Todd Gentry trying to block him, and he missed the block. That's 130 against 220 right ah. there, and he missed the block, and he made the good tackle. I'm at Monroe going deep defensively. We've caught several names. Darger Rohn and Barrett Wright, wide outs on the right side. Monroe Caddy, five man front defensively as Michael Moore with low at a motion to the far side. Michael Moore drops back. Little slant pass comes to Darger Rohn. Richie breaks one tackle, has it at the 35. Darger up to about the 38 yard line, but he stopped. Good play, but Darger couldn't escape that last tackler and Glasgow will be forced I think to put it here on fourth and two here you bank I'm not so sure he wants to punt the football at his own 38 stop made by James Ford yep they're gonna punt it the swords will come in right here with 934 left in the first half Scotty's trailing 15 to 12 there was a little flanker screen Richie was split out right to the right and uh, delayed just a second and then went over the middle for the little screen pass a uh, good tackle in there by James Ford or he'd had uh, the first down six yard pass completion fourth and two for the Scotty He's high snap. Swords picks it up. Here's a boot. Nice spiral. High kick. And it's going to take a Scotty bounce past the 30 down to about the 29-yard line. So Swords did a good job to hang on to it then got a beautiful punt away. It hung up a little bit, and he took it out of bounds at the 29. That was a great punt. A good spiral. 
kicked it to the sidelines where nobody could return it. 33-yard kick, no return. First and 10, Falcons leading Glasgow 15 to 12 with 9.08 left in the second quarter. Now Glasgow's defense has Plus, to stop and roll. Yeah, the string has been broken. We've had uh, two stops on the first two series and then touchdowns apiece on the next two. And uh, now Glasgow has the up, has uh, has been stopped once and now we must do it to Monroe County. This is the worst starting field position for the Falcons. They've got the eye formation with Geralds and Tooley. Two wideouts on the left side. Scotty seven or six man front defensively. Zandoff comes to Geralds, breaks past the 35. Geralds has it at the 40. Geralds at the Scotty 44, first and 10 after about a 15 yard pickup. Boy, he took it up the middle well that time. Looks like McNabb's coming back in for the Scotties, and let's see who he'll replace. <laughs> Nick Swords was in, but McNabb replaces him. That's about a 15 yard pickup. Third, actually the fourth first out of this game for the Falcons, and Todd Gentry made his first tackle. Uh, that's the first time that we haven't stopped the fullback. He got real good yardage. Gerald's is a hard runner. Wood is back at fullback for the uh, Falcons as Grace calling the signals. Grace on the quarterback option, keeps the football. Grace takes it past the 45 up to about the 47-yard line, maybe the 48. He was hit hard as he was twisted down by a Scotty. And what, Grace? Pretty good football player. Pickup of about three, second and seven. Jeremy Poland's third tackle. That's what you have to do when the quarterback keeps that football and turns the corner. You have to lay a good lick on him and make him get a little gun shy so he won't come back in there and make him pitch the ball next time. 820 left first half. Falcons 15, Scotty's 12, Falcons in the eye. Gerald's back in at fullback. They've got two wideouts to the right side. Running out of the veer as a toss sweep comes to Tooley. Tooley cuts outside. Tooley dragged down on a great defensive play back at the 44-yard line. Was that Garjaron who got him? Garjaron. And I mean, he worked hard to get that stop. Loss of about three. It's going to be third and ten. Larry, I think this is a very big play in this football game. Third and ten for the Falcons at the 44. Garjaron's third tackle. You've heard about a spy in the sky. Well, I think Richie Garjaron is a spy on the field. I think he's spying uh, Lorenzo Tooley wherever he goes because that's the third time that I've noticed that he's been right there is just that, as he got the football. Is that like a boxing chaser in basketball? <laughs> yes, that's just about what it is. Larry, this is a big third down play in my opinion. Yes, third and no, ten. No doubt about about that. Uh, we need to stop them here and make them kick to us this time. Tooley's a single back behind Grace. They've got wide outs all over the field as Grace will drop back. Grace being rushed. Grace is going to be sacked back at the 34-yard line. Nick Great Sowers. defensive pressure. Nick Sowers got him. I don't know if he, would, if he if that was just a deep drop or if he was trying to throw a little pass in the flat, but he never had a chance to toss it to Tooley. Nine-yard quarterback sack. Fourth and 19 at the 34, and the Scotty defense does the job with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. After them stopping us, we had to stop them and get the thing back on the flow, and now we have to take one in before halftime. Row County set to punt. James Ford will punt. James Ford will punt from his 22. High snap, picks it up. Here's a boot, wobbly kick. That will take a Monroe County bounce. Now Gentry will pick it up. Tries to cut to the outside. Swung down at the 31-yard line where the Scotties will have it first and 10. Somebody was on top of him. Was that, was that, that was, Bartley? That was McChain Bartley. He was on top of him. First and 10 for the Scotties at their own 31-yard line. 634 left in the first half. Monroe County 15, Glasgow 12. K. Wood, your assessment of this football game so far. By the way, that punt carried 34 yards. Return, nothing. What about it so far? Oh, good offensive football game so far. Both teams scored a couple of touchdowns apiece. Uh, both teams, uh, last two times we've had the ball, good defensive stand. So right now it's been an offensive football game. Scotty's with a split backfield as a handoff, working his way past the 31 up to about the 32 yard line. Is a left slot back for the Scotties. And Brandon Chambers tried to pick up some yardage, but really well, got maybe. Maybe a yard. I'm not sure that he even got that. It's going to be, I'll just call it second and ten. Really, stop for nothing. McClendon's third tackle. All of a sudden, Monroe's defense against a run is picked up. It sure has. Uh, they, they've stopped that little slant from the slot back going from one side to the other side the last three times. Moore against the six man in front. As the handoff comes to Barrett Wright, chugs his way past the 35. Wright still on his feet. Makes it up to about the 39-yard line where he'll be two or three yards short of the first down as he rips it up the middle. Well, they spotted back at the 38, didn't give him as much progress as I thought. Pick up of about seven. 
It's going to be third and three for the Scotties at the 38. They've got to reach the 41 and a half, Larry. James Ford's third stop. Big third down play for Glasgow right here. Barrett Wright, 12 carries, 108 yards. On the two scoring possessions, the third down plays were very short. Now we're getting a little bit longer as the, as the time wears on. More out Somebody of the double moved. slot. Here's Barrett Wright, crashes past the 40 to about the 40 and a half yard line. He's going to be short of the first down, I think. So, let's see, now they gave him a decent spot, but I still think he's a little bit short. Yeah, he's short. He's short about a yard. Yeah, I thought they're going to ask for a measure, but I thought the Scotties moved on the left side. I thought they did. I thought Jeremy Poland moved out too quick, but they didn't call it. I believe he's short, maybe a half a yard or so. And it's going to be another decision for Coach Jerry Eubank. He's already sent Nick Swords in the ball. Oh, okay. It's, it's shorter than a yard. It's, well, it's about only six about a inches. Foot. It's six inches. What will the Scotties do here? I don't know. I'd call timeout and go for it myself, but it uh, looks like they're going to punt it. No, we're not. We've got uh, Michael Moore in. We're going for it. 5.06 left. Big third down play, fourth down play right here, fourth at about a foot for the Scotties. Well, even if they don't make it, I think it's a good it's a good call. Monroe County, eight minutes a lot of scrimmage. Hand off Baird right. He drives, struggles. He's he didn't get the first it. down. No, he's not he, going to make it. He didn't make it to the lot of scrimmage. He stopped short of the 40. And Monroe County will get the football. As well, the Scotty stopped short on fourth at a foot. Ronnie Gerald's made the initial hit there. I still think it was a good call because you really don't want to kick it back to Monroe County. Uh, they're probably going to get as good field position anyway. First and 10 at the 40. So the Scotty stopped short of the first down with 4.56 left in the first half. Monroe County 15, Glasgow 12, Gerald's third tackle. We've got an official's timeout on the field. I did not see anybody call timeout, Larry. You see the officials talking, and they have stopped play as a referee talking with a with the Monroe County coach on the far sideline about what I'm not sure. And Monroe County give them credit; they come up with the big defensive play on fourth and a foot. And the Scotties got the ball to the guy they wanted to, Larry Baird Wright. Yeah, Baird Wright. They he just never went, had a chance. Probably so. went to the wrong side. They went to the left side where Gerald's was, and uh, he made the good hit. And and he's strong, and Barry Wright's strong in his in his own right, but Gerald's is a lot stronger and pushed him back. Now the official coming back toward the 40-yard line. I'm not sure what the discussion was on the far sideline. I don't either. I don't know what the what they were talking about, but seems to be all right now. Well, if Monroe County pushes in another score, certainly that will give them a whole lot of momentum. Well, he's coming to our side now. We're going to talk to Jerry over here. I'm not sure what the referee's talking about, Larry. Yeah. Monroe County will have the football on Ted at the 40. I didn't see anything out of sorts, did you? No, I didn't see anything wrong. I don't know what, uh, no flags were thrown or anything like that, so I don't know what they're talking about. I didn't see any extracurricular activity did you No. Nope. we saw enough of that last week didn't we <laughs> yeah way too much well i'd like to know what this discussion is about and we'll find out monroe county's got it did glasgow think they should have the football i don't know why because monroe stopped them short of the first down well he went to monroe county side first so evidently they were questioning something over there first and ten for the falcons at the scotty 40 high formation glasgow six men up front Hand off. I believe Richie Gargeron may have been offside as he, he's dropped back at about the 42, but Gargeron was straddling that line, and that official on this side dropped a flag, and I think Glasgow may be offsides. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it may be against the Scotties. I think you're right. And that's a big play because instead of second and 11, it's going to be first and five at the 35. And I think it was Gargeron, don't you? Yeah, it looked like Richie was coming in. He was out here on the wide receiver and then all of a sudden sprinted to the uh, line of scrimmage and uh, just almost on a dead run like he was going to blitz. And when he did, he was uh, over the line of scrimmage. Five penalties, 31 yards for the Scotties. First and five for Monroe County at Glasgow's 35. And all of a sudden, Larry, the momentum really switching to Monroe County's side right here. Yeah, if they put one in before halftime, they'll have a lot of momentum coming back out in the second half. They're out of the eye formation, facing a six-man front. As a handoff, nope. Grace will keep the football. Grace struggles, moves it past the 35, down to about the 33-yard line. I thought if Scotty had him wrapped up at the line of scrimmage, but he broke free, turned to his right, and picked up a couple of yards. It's going to be second and three. Barrett Wright took him down. Barrett's third tackle. Shades of last weekend against Ricky McPeak. Last Friday night, we couldn't tackle him. 
And that, that play right there, they had him wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. All they had to do is drag him down, and they let him get loose. I think Jerry Eubank really concerned about the poor tackling last yeah, it, week. It was poor tackling. Ricky McPeak is an awful strong running back, but still uh, there were times when we should have made the play on him. Gross is a wide out on the left side, along with Bartley, as the handoff comes to Tule. Tule racing past the 30 down to about the 29-yard line. Scampers left, and he picks up the first down. And Scotty, a couple of Scotty slow to get up, but Tarzerone does, as does Mike Bragg. But a first down is Tule, five-yard pickup. Tule, seven carries, 25 yards. Those aren't impressive numbers, but it's the other guys that have hurt the Scotties, particularly Mc, uh, Kitty Hull on that kickoff return that, right. that set up their second touchdown. And the quarterback has done a good job. He sure also. has. He's run a good, uh, Very good play job. on the option, and he's thrown the touchdown pass, of course. Brandon Chambers just made a second stop. They've got a gross and Cloyd, wide outs to the right side, first and 10 at the Scotty, 28. As Grace will drop back, he fumbled the football, and the Scotties have it at the 35. Michael Bragg. A big break for Glasgow with 3-12 left of the first half. When Grace took that snap, Larry, somebody was on top of him. It looked like he might be dropping back to pass or maybe run the option, and Bragg fell on it, and the Scotties have it first and 10 at the 35. That's a big turnover for the Scotties. Now they have a chance to get the momentum going into halftime. 3-12 to go. Glasgow, I think, has all three timeouts remaining. Monroe County has two timeouts. First and 10. I'm not sure who got the hit on Gross. I don't know if it was Bragg that actually wrapped him up. Grace, I mean. Somebody else, somebody stuck him, Larry. Couldn't tell who it was. I don't know whether it was Michael or not, but Michael fell on the football. Here's more. Pass intended for Garjaron. It is incomplete at the 45-yard line. And Boy, McMillan almost had that picked off. Yeah, Richie Dodgerone, uh, turned defensive man right there, did a good job to keep McMillan from intercepting that one. I think Michael Moore felt the pressure that time. I think he took a hit after he released that second and 10 for the Scotties at the 35. Yeah, we kind of missed Freddie McCandless in there with his speed and uh, knowing how to run the patterns real well and precise. Uh, it, it's tough uh, having your best receiver out. At halftime, we'll have the Scotty band. We'll have the seniors mentioned for the Glasgow Scotties. And when we get time, we're going to talk with Randall about the state competition. Second and 10 for the Scotties and the double slot against the six-man front. Michael Moore calling the signals. Gentry in motion as reverse handoff comes to Barrett Wright. Cuts outside at the 40. Wright's got it at the 45-yard line. He stopped maybe a half a yard short of the first down at the 45. See if they stop the clock. They do stop it momentarily, but I think he's short. I thought Wright might get a bigger gain that yeah. time as uh, Eddie Gross makes his first tackle. Garzeron limps off the field, and number five replaces him, Demetrius Steer, 5'9", 149, sophomore, third and less than a yard for the Scotties at the 45. John J. Bird made a good block, had his man on the ground, and Barrett, I think, wished, went the wrong way. Had he cut to the outside, gone down the sideline, he would have had the first down easily and gone out of bounds. Scotty's out of the double slot, third and short. Michael Moore following the signal. Scotty's outside is Gentry, has a first down. Gentry takes it up to the 48-yard line. I thought Glasgow had a mix-up for a moment there, but Gentry escapes the tackler, turns left, and picks up the first down, gain of about four by Gentry. First and 10 for the Scotties at their own 48-yard line, 220 left in the first half. Glasgow has nine first downs in this game. Scott McMillan's third to tackle at the 48. Here come the Scotties. Richie Gosron has a cramp in his leg, so he'll be back. Scotties out of the double slot, wide out on the left side is Gentry. Six-man front, handoff comes to Barrett Wright, cuts outside at midfield. Wright bangs to about the 47-yard line. Picked up about five, but the clock becoming a factor with two minutes to go in the first half. Garzerot is back in. Pick up of about five. Barrett Wright, 16 carries, 124 yards. Gross took him down, but now the time becoming a factor, Larry, with a minute 50 left in the first half. Scotty's trailing 15 to 12. Garzerot wide out on the left side. They're in the double slot. Whitlow is a fullback. Monroe County with a six-man front as Michael Moore drops back. Here's a pass intended for Garzeron. Does he have it? He's got it at the 30. Garzeron at the 25. Garzeron out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Beautiful throw by Michael Moore on the left sideline. First and 10 for the Scotties at the Falcon 25-yard line. The big play the Scotties were looking for, a 22-yard pass completion. He was driven out of bounds by McMillan. Perfect toss. First and 10 at the 25 for the Scotties. Steer in. Garzeron out with the bit at 31 left in the first half. Yeah, Richie's leg still a little bit sore. Probably still got that muscle cramp a little bit, and they brought him back out of the game. But that was a big play. That was the pass play that it gets them down in territory to score, man. Out of the double slot, let's go 10 first downs. There's Michael Moore. On the handoff, here's Todd Gentry fights his way down to about the 22-yard line. 
Let's see where he'll officially be ruled down. At about the, well, about the 21, Gentry almost crawled his way for a couple of more yards as Adam Rouse makes his fifth tackle. I bet at 15. Second and about seven, pickup of three. Gentry, eight carries, 47 yards. Almost time for the timeouts now after this play, probably start utilizing their timeouts. Here's Barrett Wright crashing his way inside the 20, down to about the, well, about the 20-yard line, and the Scotties will call timeout. You called it right, Cavewood. 56 seconds to go in the first half. Barrett Wright takes it down to about the 19-yard line. Picked up about a yard or two. It's going to be third and about five for the Scotties. Timeout on the field. Matt will take only a 30-second break. 15 to 12, Monroe County leading Glasgow. 56 seconds left in the first half. Back in 30 seconds on WCLU Sports. We're here with Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's. To guess what Dave's putting on Wendy's newest chicken sandwich, call now. You're on the air. Rutabagas. Rutabagas are big. Not big enough. Hello? Anchovies. Nope. Dave, end the suspense. Well, I decided to go with something classy. So we're topping our whole chicken breast filet with three strips of bacon, melted Swiss, and a tangy sauce. And we're calling it Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. Mmm, Wendy's new chicken bacon Swiss. Hello? I'm telling you, Rutabagas. I'll pass that along. At participating Wendy's for a limited time. The Glasgow Scotties driving. They've got it at the 20-yard line of Monroe County, third and five. Randall Cook's going to be going down to the field, and a lot of the senior band members will talk about that. And uh, the Scotty band of performance at halftime. But right now, Larry, a big third down play for the Scotties, third and five at the Monroe County 20. Glasgow with one timeout remaining. Well, we've got two, two downs to pick up the first down. We want to get close enough where we can score the touchdown, of course. Receivers split all over the field as Michael Moore will drop back. Here's a pass. It is all thrown past Garzeron at the 15-yard line. It is incomplete, thrown a little bit wide. Yeah. Now, he was open, but the pass is incomplete. It's going to be fourth and five for the Scotties. Threw it just a little bit too wide. Uh, he made the cut. Uh, that's the right idea to throw it just as he makes his cut, but he threw it way out far too, too far to the sidelines. Here we go on fourth and five for the Scotties, trailing 15 to 12 with 53 seconds to go in the call, first half. Call our second time out here. All right. Matt, if we've got a score on Barron County's game, we might pass that along. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Monroe County 15, Glasgow 12. Back after this one message on WCLU Sports. There's no stealing the thunder. No. It can't be contained. You're my Dr. Pepper. And you cool me off like rain. You're a part of me. This is Mac Dumb, WCOU Sports Room. Got some updated scores for you. No score yet on the Baron Grayson game going on. Uh, Bowling Green is beating Warren East 21 to nothing. And Franklin and Warren Central at the end of the first, all tied up at seven. Now back out to Scotty Field and Jim Moody. All right, thank you, Matt. Here we go, Larry, and Jonathan Belcher is going to attempt a 30, what is it, a 36-yard field goal. Watch a fake. Now Jerome will hold. He's going to try it. Here's a kick. Oh, oh beautiful kick from Belcher. Yeah. Good. 36 yarder. I should have had Johnny Belcher up here calling that. Boy, he kicked. He I'm going to get him up here in a second. He I kicked that football good from 43 yards. What do you think about that, Johnny Belcher? MM3. <laughs> oh, that's a Tennessee saying. Yeah, he's taking after John Ward, isn't he? Tied at 15. We'll hold it here, Bruce. That's a, that's a big lift. At least the Scotty's got some points out of that drive. I think he pulled his sand wedge out of the bag there and tipped <laughs> that one over. Oh, uh, that was a driver. 37 yard. That's a crowd. What was Franklin the longest day? before? What, 37 or 41? What's that for, for Glasgow? We kicked a 41. Kevin Baldock kicked a 46 yarder one year against Monroe. Against Monroe, yeah, several years ago. In the rain. By the way, Kevin's back playing football for North Alabama. I'm glad to hear that. Kevin is a heck of a competitor, and he really loves the game. Now, Larry, how far was that, Jim? That was a 30, was that 36 or 37? 37-yard field goal. Now, Larry. Second longest in Glasgow history. Larry, here's where I get really scared. There's only 46 <laughs> seconds left, but 
Glasgow had some problems on the kickoff the last time. Yeah, there is reason to uh, to get scared. That's, that's for sure because uh, we can't. We had to kick off three times the last time before we got it in play, and uh, you would definitely want to kick it away from Tooley. And with 46 seconds to go, he's as dangerous as they get. Elcher, he's going to kick it on side, and here's a boot, and it is going to go out of bounds at the 39 yard line. And let's see, the flag is dropped at that point. 46 seconds left. And let's see. Scotty thought maybe Monroe County had touched it, but not so. Glasgow's going to have to kick it again. Here we go. Glasgow was penalized twice the last time they tried to kick off before they got it into the field of play. And now this is the third time Glasgow's been penalized on kicking it out of bounds. 46 seconds left, Belcher 37-yard field goal, and this game is tied at 15 on a big drive by the Glasgow Scotties. I think Coach Duval was asking the official whether or not the ball wasn't tipped there by number 10. I mean, it, it looked, you know, from here like it might have been tipped, and the official sort of turned around and said something to him, but, you know, I was wondering whether or not, you know, the ball wasn't tipped on that kick. So now, Larry... Looks like Belcher's going to try the, uh, the opposite side right here as he'll kick it from the 35. Well, with only 46 seconds to go, you definitely don't want to kick it to Tooley and give him a chance to break your back right here before halftime, even though you give them good field position around midfield. 46 seconds left. I think Monroe County has two timeouts left. This game is tied at 15. It's been an exciting first half. 8 o'clock, WCLU Glasgow. Here's an onside kick. That will be taken by an up back and falling down at the 47-yard line is going to be Stephen Taylor with 43 seconds left. Well, don't Monroe County, they can hit the home run quickly, so the Scotties are going to have to play tough defense here at the 47. Monroe's got it first and 10. They've got two timeouts. Let's see how long it takes the officials to wind the clock here. The clock is wound with 40 seconds to go. Monroe County's still in their huddle. They'll hurry. I believe Grace could put it up. Or you know Tooley, Larry. Tooley can race the distance any time he touches that football. You got that right. I'd have to try him about two times here. They're in the I formation. Well, nope, actually they're running out of the veer, and they've got they've got two wide outs on both sides. Six-man front. They might reverse. run the double reverse. Here cutting to the outside at the midfield strut. Knocked out of bounds is going to be McMillan at the Scotty 42-yard line on the reverse. And who got him that time? Haywood. That was or Hull. It was Hull. Six. Kitty six. Hull. Todd Gentry made the tackle. Hull was the one that was carrying the football. Hull. Kitty Hull, number 15, carried the football. Sean, Sean Shirley. Oh, I'm sorry. Sean Shirley. They've got a number wrong on their program here. Sean Shirley, number 15, carried it that time. And Shirley picked up 15 yards. First and 10 for the Falcons at the Scotty 43. A lot of time went off the clock, though. Only 15 seconds left of the first half. They're out of the double slot. And now a timeout is asked for by Monroe County. This game tied at 15 with 15 seconds to go. That's their second timeout. We'll be back after this message on WCLU Sports. Did you open your door to step outside today and discover, man, man, man. it's cold out here. here. Golden Farley on College Street in Glasgow can get you prepared for the cold weather ahead with warm clothing, and you'll look good, too. You'll find colorful sweaters, denim and cotton twill sports shirts in the latest styles at Golden Farley, plus a selected group of fall sports coats, 50 to 60% off. To stay even warmer, you'll find overcoats and leather jackets in bomber and field jacket styles. Hurry in for the tops in fall and winter fashions at Golden Farley, College Street in Glasgow, and stay out of the cold. Larry, you don't want Monroe County to score in the final few seconds, but Coach Pettit's team certainly is capable of scoring any time they've got the football. Well, that's what makes it exciting when you have speed on your team, and it doesn't make any difference how much time's left. That's you right. Can score from anywhere on the field, and that's uh, that's the difference that speed makes. They've got Bartley on the right side, a wide out on the left side. Watch a little screen. Floyd. Watch All right. A little screened. They're running out of the double slot. There it is. No. Nope. Here's a pass. It's picked off. Oh, oh, almost picked off by Garzeron. And I'll tell you what, McBartley played as a, a defensive back that time. Bartley did. And uh, Richie almost picked that off, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. He made a very good play stepping in front of Bar Bartley. Almost had the interception. And it's uh, he probably wished he had after this next play because Tooley had cut right off McShane Bartley's tail and was right out in the right flat. Had they thrown the football oh, to the him? shovel pass? Yeah. 
Yeah. Or a little pitch little, back. Little, he had just followed McBar uh, McShane Bartley down the field and cut to his right. And had he thrown it to him instead of Bartley, uh, McShane Bartley, he could have been gone. Falcons in the eye formation. Now they move to the double slot and they ask for and get their final timeout. 10 seconds to go in the first half. The Scotties and the Falcons tied at 10. We'll be back after this message on WCLU Sports. A team is a group of people working together for a common goal. The team of 33 people at the Glasgow Electric Plan Board work to provide Glasgow with reliable electric service and superior cable TV service. As residents of Glasgow, you own the Electric Plan Board. The EPB team works for the common good of Glasgow to make the quality of life better for everyone. Support your hometown. The EPB EPB team is working for you day and night. Call them anytime at 651-8341. Had a whale of a first half as the Glasgow Scotties at a Monroe County Falcons tied at 15. Allen County leading Greenwood in the second quarter by a score of 14 to 3. No score on Barron County's game with Grayson County. Larry second and 10, but the clock is a factor here. Monroe County has no timeouts left. There's 10 seconds to go. Probably enough time for two plays. Yeah, we sat here and said we'd give it to Tooley a couple of times, and they haven't given to him yet. They are in the double slot. Wideouts on both sides, Cloyd and Gross. Scotty's four-man front defensively. As a little pass over the middle caught by McBartley. McBartley <laughs> tried to pitch it to Tooley, but Tooley wasn't anywhere in the vicinity. The clock rolls down as McBartley, or Bartley is taken down at the 35. And there was some mix-up that time that from Monroe was, County, wasn't there? That was a funny play right there. It was going to be the old uh, hook and ladder, as you say. They were going down and do the hook pattern. McBa uh, McShane Bartley was going to catch the pass and then lateral it off to Tooley. But Richie God's run went with Tooley instead of making the tackle. Score at halftime is 15-15. Larry, let's ask your trivia question. 651-9149 is the number to call. As somebody could win a free meal from McDonald's here in Glasgow. All right, Jim, it's on baseball here tonight. Greg Maddox of the Atlanta Braves just won his third straight Cy Young Award. He is the only player in history to win three straight. I want to know who was the first pitcher to win two straight Cy Young Awards. Who was the first pitcher in Major League history to win two straight Cy Young Awards? 6519149. Larry, if you'll remove your headphone, Henry's got some information that we need to pass along for uh, concerning the Scotty Band. There was a, a traffic accident on I-75 uh, near Berea, Kentucky on Wednesday night. Some hydrofluoric acid spilled and Henry, that road has been closed since Wednesday night. Of course, the Scotties are going to Madison Southern High School for state competition. And I know you just talked with uh, a spokesman at the London State Police Post. That's right, Jim. I've talked to the Associated Press and to the State Police uh, Post to dispatcher at London. And uh, the situation is the uh, interstate, Interstate 75 is going to be closed at the point of the accident until tomorrow afternoon. The accident is in between the, Rock, the Rockcastle County Mount Vernon exit and Berea exit. What that means is, is that if you had thought about going to Berea by going to London and then up to Mount Vernon and on up I-75, you cannot do that. Now, there is an alternate route that AAA has recommended, but the state police tell us that if you're coming from Glasgow, that you'll be slowed up by a couple of hours because of the, uh, because of the traffic that's naturally on uh, U.S. Calvert & Dunn Insurance not only offer a variety of policies, but are exceptional in their customer service and up-to-date quotes. Contact Vicki Bartley and her staff for any of your insurance needs. Calvert & Dunn Insurance is next to the Plaza Theater in downtown Glasgow. That's 3A competition. The finals in competition will be held at Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond for the top four scores in the preliminary.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's senior night here at Scotty Field. At the start of the game, we recognize the cheerleaders and football players. It's halftime now, and we'd like to recognize the senior band members. First of all, Laura Bauer, daughter of Larry and Vicki Jenkins. and Kenny Bowman. Erin Cloyd, daughter of Marsha and Steve Hansen. Amy Curd, daughter of Teresa Curd and Dickie Curd. Emberton. Frazier, daughter of Paula and Steve Frazier. <laughs> Angela Gentry, daughter of Roger and Linda Gentry.
Angela Jenkins, daughter of Larry and Vicki Jenkins. Beth Johnson, daughter of David and Janya Johnson. <laughs> Beth Jolly, son of Larry and Martha and Jolly. Nichols, daughter of Doc and Susie Nichols. <laughs> Angela Norman, daughter of Larry and Mary Lou Norman. Pettigo, daughter of Rebecca Pettigo and David Pettigo. Dana Stokes, daughter of Bob and Judy Stokes. <laughs> Akiko Sugamura, daughter of Sachihiko and Yasunbru Sugamura. <laughs> son of J.C. and Lewis Oliver. <laughs> Susan Beth Thomas, daughter of Guy and Sandy Thomas. Tinsley, daughter of Betty Tinsley and Larry Tinsley. <laughs> Wes Witcher, son of Gary Witcher and Laura Witcher. round of applause for these Scotty senior band members.
again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final home performance of the Glasgow Scotty Band for this year. They will perform at Berea, Kentucky tomorrow at 11.02 a.m. Glasgow time in the preliminary state competition. That's Class 3A. The finals in the competition will be at Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond for the top four teams. Correction. Calvert and Dunn Insurance not only offer a variety of policies, but are exceptional in their customer service and up-to-date quotes. Contact Vicki Bartley and her staff for any of your insurance needs. Calvert and Dunn Insurance is next to the Plaza Theater in downtown Glasgow. 24 yards, a TD, his longest being that 24-yard touchdown. McShane Bartley caught one for five yards, and Lorenzo Tooley had one catch for 16 yards. Punting the ball, James Ford punted one time for 34 yards. And uh, that a look at Monroe's first half individual stats. Looking at the Glasgow Scotties, Barrett Wright, 17 carries, 125 yards, two touchdowns. His long was a big 44-yard burst up the middle. Todd Gentry had eight carries for 47 yards. His long was 11. Michael Moore was two of five, passing the ball for 28 yards, both of those to Richie Gajeron. Nick Swords came in and punted one time for 33-yard uh, kick and then John Belcher had the big 37 yard field goal right there in the last minute of the half to tie this ball game up and I noticed here the Scotties had 32 plays to Monroe's 24. Bruce mentioned the Glasgow Little League All-Stars for me as Got we're going to be moving on to the second half so we're going to have to get through this uh, pretty quickly here. Fine group of Glasgow All-Stars will be going to Bargetown tomorrow to play at 2 o'clock. Uh, Gary Ladd, Cedric Kurd, Adam so Southall, Richie Thompson, Jeffrey Bragg, Zach Darnell, Glenn Downs, Mac Michalajic, Blake Chambers, Jason Huffman, Evan Harlow, Josh Kingry, Travis Smiley, Justin Alexander, Nicholas Napier, Jarrell Wood, Brad Bull, Corey Clark, Daryl Woodcock, Bryce Wood, Bradley Bodep, Dudep, I'm sorry, Larry Dale Martin, Matt Martin, John Kurt Fry, Matt Buchanan, Randy Depp, Drew Shirley, Nathaniel Goodman, and Sterling Schick. Thank you, Bruce. That's in Bardstown tomorrow, right? That's in Bardstown. And the right. Toy Bowl soon, I suppose. Uh, the Toy Bowl will be coming up soon. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate it. Good job. Randall Cook, excellent job on the commentary there. And uh, the Scotty Band did a wonderful job. Larry, what about the tackles as we get ready for the second half? All right, first for Monroe County, they, uh, Eddie Gross had two, Adam Wood with one, Jared Bartley had had one, James Ford with three, Lorenzo Tooley with two, Scotty McMillan had four, Ronnie Gerald's with three, Sean Shirley had one, Matt Spear with one, Jeremy McClendon had three and a fumble recovery, Matthew Clarkson with one, McShane Bartley with two, and Adam Rouse had five for the Scotties, Todd Gentry with two, Richie Gajeron with two, Brandon Chambers with two, Michael Bragg with a fumble recovery and one, Stephen Hughes with one. There's a fumble, Larry, and the Scotties may have it at the 42-yard line. Let's see if they've got it. Nick at the Swords, 41. I think. Well, I'm not seeing an indication from the official. Yes, Glasgow's got it. And I believe that was Gerald's who fumbled the football. I or not believe. Gerald's, or was it Gerald's? Or Williams? And or I McMillan. Maybe I it was 33 McMillan. I believe Nick Sowers got that fumble recovery. I'm sorry, Larry. I didn't mean to interrupt you to go ahead with the rest of the tackles. Well, that was fine. I would be interrupted any time <laughs> Brandon Tooley had two. Jeremy Poland with three. Jonathan McDowell with two. Nick Swords with one and a sack. Barrett Wright with three. So Monroe County turns it over for the third time in this football game. Scotty's out of the double slot as Ty Gentry tries to work for running room, moves it past the 40 down to the 39-yard line. And, boy, I mean, he was waylaid that time by John Turner, number yeah. 50. He wasn't supposed to play tonight. That's number 50, John Turner. I mean, he really injured. Tell you what, when these Monroe County fellas tackle you, they sling you hard to the ground. Second and eight, Gentry, two-yard pickup that time. Yeah, they try to put it on you, and uh, that's what you're supposed to do when you come up that middle. Scott, Hit him as hard as you can. Scotty's moved to your left in the third quarter. Monroe County to your right. Scotty's out of the double slot. Barrett Wright is a fullback. Clark and Gentry there in the slots. Clark said a motion to the far side as on the quarterback draw. No gain for Moore. He is met back at the 43-yard line. Well, they gave Monroe County a good spot on that one. And we've got an official's timeout, and we've got an injured player for the Falcons. Loss of about two. It's going to be third and ten, and I'm not sure who the injured player is for Monroe County. I don't know either who it is. I can't see on the ground. Jeremy McClendon made the stop along with uh, Ronnie Gerald. 10-59 left in the first in the third quarter. This game tied at 15. Scotty's recovered a fumble on the kickoff. Nick Swords, I believe, got that recovery. Timeout on the field. Tied at 15. We'll return after this one message on WCLU Sports. 
It's true that at Glass Paving, we've been into some pretty big projects. Maybe it was a major road project, or maybe it was a couple's big decision to finally have that driveway paved. At Glass Paving, we approach both with the same amount of professionalism. Over 100 years of combined experience makes it possible for us to sit down with you and shed some light on the questions you may have. It's not every day you take on a paving project, but when you're ready, one phone call to 651 3897 puts you in touch with a locally owned, quality-oriented company. Our workmanship is state-of-the-art, and our customer satisfaction is second to none. Because at Glass Paving, we make it right, and we're here to stay. Now in our new location at 2870 North Jackson Highway, Glass Paving. And this is Matt Gum, WCLU Sports Room. Pass along a few scores to you while we have a break. At the half, Barron 0, Grayson 0. Got a good game up in Grayson County going on. Russell County 27, Adair County 13. Of course, Glasgow Monroe tied at 15, just started the third quarter. At the half, Allen leads Greenwood 14 to six. At the half, Bowling Green 35, Warren East six. Two tight games up in the other district that'll be in our region. E-Town with a 21 to 20 lead over LaRue County, that's in the fourth. And Fort Knox, a 16 to 10 lead over Taylor County, that's also in the fourth quarter. Franklin and Warren Central are tied at 14 right now. That is at halftime. Now I'll send it back out to Jim Moody at Scotty Field. Clinton, the injured player, has on the fullback blast. Here comes Whitlow. Whitlow races down to the 40-yard line for the Scotties, but that's about it. And it's going to be fourth and 10. Thank you, Matt. Good job, sir. Jeremy McClendon came off the field under his own power. That's good to see a 6'1", 260-pound junior. Now the Scotties, Larry, have it fourth at about eight at the Monroe County 40-yard line as Whitlow touched it for the first time. Monroe County's defense after the Scotties recover the fumble. They've come up big so far. Gerald's fourth tackle. Yeah, it's a shame not to take any more advantage of uh, the big fumble recovery than we have so far, but it's fourth down and a long eight. Scotty's out of the double slot as Michael Moore drops back. Moore's pass is incomplete. Boy, that's almost an interference call right there. I mean, Clark, he got waylaid, and I thought he got hit before the ball was there. And number 24, James Ford, well, he gave him a lick, Larry, and I'm not sure that should have been pass interference. Well, it was awful close, Jim. The football was uh, uh, thrown behind him just a little bit, and maybe that's why the referee didn't Wasn't call catchable? It. Maybe so. That's about as close as you can get it. So, Larry, give the Falcons credit. Glasgow only nets a yard after they recover the football. And that's here a, come the Falcons. That's a big play for Monroe County, a big, uh, big series right there. Tittle four left of the third quarter. Falcons out of the eye. Glasgow five-man front. Brace calling the signals. Here's Wood. Nothing. Fumble. Oh, he fumbled it again, and the Scotties have it again at the 44. Gergeron's got it. Boy, Monroe County can't hang on to the football, but Glasgow so far has not taken advantage of it. I don't know who stuck Wood, but he lost it at the 42, and it went bouncing, and the Scotties have it at Monroe's 44. Somebody on that right side of the line, I don't know who it was, but Richie Gazeron, it came squirting out and went forward about three or four yards, and Richie Gazeron laid right on top of it. That's a fourth turnover for Monroe County. Three fumbles at an interception. Out of the double slot, Eden Snipe for the Scotties first and 10 at the 44 Monroe County. As the handoff comes to Gentry. Gentry works his way down to the 40-yard line. Still carrying tacklers, and let's see where he's ruled out of bounds. At about the 39 on the near sideline, close to the 40. But Todd picked up about four on that play. Second and six. Adam Rouse's sixth tackle. We've called Rouse's name several times. Ball is spotted at the 40, so it's going to be second and six. Well, we need to take advantage of this opportunity. We already had one fumble on the kickoff and uh, didn't take advantage of it. Lost it in four downs. Clark is the left slot. Gentry's the right slot. The fullback is Barrett right. Monroe County has six men at the line of scrimmage as Michael Moore calling the signals. Toss sweep Barrett right. That's outside. Right crashes past the 40 to the 39-yard line, but he didn't have any interference in front of him. No blocking. And he, as he took that pitch to the left, Larry, he just tried to run over a couple of defenders. And, I mean, he knocked him around pretty good, but he was slowed, and he got only a yard. It's going to be third and five. Eddie Gross's third tackle. Looks like Monroe County has uh, gone in at halftime and come out and say, you're not going to run the football against us and putting everybody up on the line of scrimmage, so we're going to have to loosen them up some way or another. We're going to have to throw the football. 9.24 left in the third quarter. The Scotties and the Falcons tied at 15. If Monroe County wins, they'll grab the district championship. If the Scotties win, Allen County's going to win the district title. 
Michael Moore looks at a seven-man front defensively for the Falcons. Well, it's a six-man front as a double reverse handoff comes to Todd Gentry. Tries to break outside, but he is slowed, and that was almost a spear on Monroe County at the 40, but uh, a tackle for the Falcons and making that stop was McClendon. It wasn't McClendon, but it was another player who almost oh. came in and speared yeah, number, Gentry. Number 83, Adam Rouse, came in with his helmet, but uh, didn't get the call. On the double reverse, Larry, Really a loss of about a yard on that play. It's going to be fourth and six. I mean, Rose defense against the run has been tough. They've coughed it up twice. But so far in seven downs, Glasgow's only gained five yards. Yeah, not, not near the effort that we had in the first half. Michael Moore drops back. Here's a little safe pass caught by Garjaron. Garjaron breaks the tackle at the 30. Garjaron's got it at the 25, 20, 15. He's taken out of bounds around the 10-yard line. First and 10 for the Scotties. Maybe first and goal. Let's see where they spot it. Nice grab by Garjaron. Good throw by Moore on the right side. Describe it, Larry, as the Scotties will have it. Let's see if it's, it's very close. I believe it is just shy. Well, it's around the 10-yard line. I'm not sure if Glasgow can get a first down or not. Let's see if they'll stretch the chains. And Glasgow can get a first down. Looks like they could get to about the half-yard line. Richie came from his end position in just a little out pattern, about five yards down and out. Uh, Michael Moore put it right on the money, and he is able to break a tackle. Here's Baird Wright fighting his way down to about the five-yard line off right tackle. Lorenzo Tooley made the stop above it to go after a 30-yard pass completion. Now Baird Wright mm, charges for about five. It's going to be second at about five, just shy of the five-yard line. Glasgow could get a first down without scoring. Golden opportunity, big pass play a moment ago as the Scotties trying to move it in for the third time in this football game. Well, if they're not going to give you the run, if you can't run it, you're going to have to take something else that they're giving you, and they're giving you the little pass, the little out patterns. Scotty's out of the double slot. Monroe County, seven minutes, the line of scrimmage. Michael Moore calling the signals. Clark's in motion to the right side. Here's a handoff to Barrett Wright. Cuts outside. Wright drives, but he's going to be stopped out of bounds. He got it to well, maybe maybe the original line of scrimmage. Difficult to see until they spot that football because it was on the far side. And they bring it back, and it is at the five, so no gain on the play. It's going to be third and five. He might have lost a half a yard, but it is about third and five for the Scotties at the Monroe County five-and-a-half yard line with 7.14 left in the third quarter. Boy, you hit the nail on the head. Their, their, their defense against a run is tough. Sean Shirley's third tackle. I'd like to see the pass to the tight end right here that we used for the two-point conversion last week at Allen County. Uh, Glasgow and a split look with Michael Moore. Quick toss comes to Gentry. Cuts inside. He's not going anywhere. He's dropped back at the seven-yard line, and we may see Belcher come in to attempt his second field goal of this game. Well, Monroe County's defense stepping when Glasgow had it second and five at the five-yard line. And after that, the Scotties minus two yards. Roddy Gerald's fifth tackle. And here's Belcher in to attempt what should be a 24-yard field goal. Pretty much in the middle of the field. Scotty's trying to take the lead off a low snap. Garjaron picks it up. And Richie's going to be dropped back at the 16-yard line on the mishandled snap. May, that snap may have been low, though. It was. a low snap. The snap was on the ground, and Richie had no choice but to try to pick it up and run with it. And, uh, and Lorenzo Tooley was right there to bring him down. And Scotty's come up empty, Larry. And that could be very big in this football game. Got a big pass play, drove it down to the five-yard line, and then they were stopped. And this game is still tied at 15 with 6.22 left of the third quarter. Monroe County's defense against the run has been super here in the second half. Yeah, they've come out uh, like Allen County did last week and uh, shut the run down. Grace calling the signals. Receiver split left and right. High formation behind him. Six man in front for the Scotties. As a handoff. Nope. Grace will keep the football. Slides past the 17 to about the 18 or 19 yard line. The drive starting at the 16. He moves it up to about the 18-yard line, a pickup of about two. It's going to be second and eight. Pickup of almost three, but still second at a short eight for the uh, Falcons as Jeremy Poland brought him down. And Grace has run that quarterback option a couple of times, hasn't he? He's done real well. They were telling me that he didn't run it very well, but tonight he has made some good decisions. He made a great fake up the middle to Gerald's that time, pulled it out and kept it. High formation, Wood. And uh, Tooley behind Grace. Two wideouts to the left side as a quick toss sweep comes to Tooley. That's outside. Tooley tripped up. Good play. I don't think he got it to the 20 on the toss sweep to the left. That was Brandon he, Chambers right there. Oh, he, he made a beautiful stop 
Let's see where the ball was spotted again. It's on that far side. It is spotted at the 20, but that's it. It's going to be third at about six for the Falcons at the 20-yard line. Tooley's carried it eight times for 26 yards, but don't let that fool you because he could bust it right here for 80 yards if he gets open. A little bit different than the first half. Defense is playing the name of the game, name of the tune right now. High formation. Gerald's is a fullback. They've got two wideouts on the right side on four on third and six. Six man front for the Scotties as Grace drops back. Here's a pass. It is going to be caught at the 20 yard line and upended at about the 24 is Gerald's coming out of the backfield and he's going to his forward to progress carries him to the 25. And they're going to call. I thought he would be short of the first down. I thought he had to get to the 26. They spotted at the 25. Well, no, they spotted a little bit beyond the 25, Larry. Well, this is going to be close. It looks like it's right on the, right on the yard stripe, and if it is, he should be a little short. Well, I think it's a little bit beyond the yard stripe. Somebody's helmet right in the way, and I can't see. It is right in front of the Scotty sideline, and it let's see. It is a little short. So he is going to be short of the first down. About a half yard. Well, Monroe County's defense has certainly stood the challenge. Strategically, you would usually punt still with 438 left in the third quarter. Definitely. Larry, I'm, I'm not sure. Now, coming into the contest is their punter, James Ford. Do you think they might run a fake? Well, it's very possible, but uh, that's deep, a big deep that's field a, position. That's a big gamble here deep in, uh, in our field position. The way their defense has been playing, I probably would go ahead and kick it. Now, the up man that might get the snap if it's a fake would be Wood, Larry. They may try to draw people offside, so you got to sit in there. Ford will punt from his 13. He will put it. Here's a kick. Oh, he kicked it off the right side of his foot, and that ball's going out of bounds. Glasgow's going to get pretty good field position at the 41-yard line of Monroe County, first and 10. So three times Glasgow's been in Monroe County field position. The first two times, Larry, they've come up empty. Last time had a golden opportunity. Right now they've got it at the Falcon 41. Give the defense credit. They stopped the Falcons right there. They have, and that was a good defensive stand right there. Now it's up the offense with three good possessions. Reminds me of the E-Town game when we dominated them defensively and couldn't take the football in on the offensive side and, and get enough points to uh, win the football game, and we're in the same situation right now. 16-yard punt by Ford. Whitlow's a fullback. Wright and Gentry are the slots against the five-man front as the handoff comes to Todd Gentry. Flag is dropped as Gentry works his way past the 35. Gentry's got it at the 30. There are three flags dropped on this play. And I've got a feeling this one's going to come back. They were dropped in the defensive secondary. So well, it's one was dropped at the line of scrimmage, Larry. Okay, we do have one on the line of scrimmage, and Glasgow is clapping. They had too many men on the field. But are there, are there other infractions? Illegal participation for Monroe County. There were three flags dropped, Larry. I guess all three of them were the same yeah. call. By the time they got to counting, I said they all three counted, I guess, at the <laughs> different times. So this gives the Scotties a big break right here. Now, Gentry got the first down as he carried it to the 30. Now they're, they're discussing the situation with the official. And if this is tacked on after the run, it's going to be a big boost for the Scotties. Let's see. I've got illegal participation. No, it won't. It will come from the line of scrimmage, Larry, but it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. So it's going to give the Scotties a first down. That's right. 15 yards and no automatic first down. At the Falcon 25. Well, you might be able to stop the rush, but if you have too many men on the field, <laughs> you can't stop Glasgow from moving the football that way, can you? That's exactly right. Let's see how many times Monroe's been penalized, Randall, in this football game. With Six times. I'm sorry. Three times for 35 yards. With the exception of the pass, that's the best offensive play of the night. 413 left in the third quarter. This game tied at 15. Scotty's out of the double slot. Guards your own wide out on the right side as Michael Moore gives it to Ty Gentry. Cuts inside. Gentry at the 20-yard oh. line. Gentry at the 15. Gentry at the 5. Beautiful oh. run by Gentry. First and goal for the Glasgow Scotties at the five-yard line. What a run by Gentry, Larry. That was an excellent run. You'd have, you have to see that one to believe it. If you get a chance to see the replay on that, he just ducked right under two tacklers and just kept on his feet. And that's what you can do when you're 130 pounds and light on your feet. And he did it, boy, and just split them and went right on down to the five-yard. Line. He gained 20 yards, Randall. 15 of that, he was he was ducking all the way. He learned that from that game, duck, duck, goose. <laughs> Scotty's trying to avoid a goose egg on this drive. First and goal at the five. Really? Timeout asked for by the Scotties with 347 left in the third quarter. This game tied at 15. Glasgow and Monroe County. Glasgow first in goal at the Falcon five. Who made that stop, by the way? Was that Ford? That was Lorenzo Tooley. Well, that Lorenzo stop. Tooley. That's right. That's his fifth stop of the night. Matt will take only a 30-second break. Back after this message on 14 Carat Gold Sports. <laughs> Thank you. 
here we go. I want a taste. Makes me delirious. My Papa John's pizza. Some kind of serious. I call my Papa. Mm, Papa John's. Now that's serious pizza. Call your papa at 6517775. Scotty's with the football, Larry. The last time they were at the five yard line, they were stopped. And on a bad snap, the field goal opportunity was botched. Here they come with the full house backfield. Monroe County, 10 minutes at the line of scrimmage. Handoff, Barrett Wright works his way, drives down to about the two yard line off left tackle. And it's going to be second and goal for the Scotties at the Monroe County two-yard line with 3.35 left in the third quarter. Glasgow has dominated the third quarter in field position. This is the third time they've been inside of Monroe County territory. Monroe County has lost it twice on fumbles. This is the second time they've been inside the 10. They're at the two, second and goal. That stop was made by Adam Rouse. I think Monroe's only run about five or six plays this quarter. Moore gives it to Wright. Wright drives. Does he have six? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Glasgow. And the Scotties lead 21 to 15 with 3-10 left in the fur at third quarter. Well, that time, Monroe County couldn't keep the Scotties out of the end zone. And the big play in that drive, in my opinion, the one, of course, was the 15-yard penalty against the Falcons, but a couple of big runs by Todd Gentry yeah, in that drive. Todd Gentry was set to set the whole thing up, no doubt about that. Elcher will try to give the Scotties a seven-point lead right here. Hughes will snap. Good snap. Here's the kick by Melcher. That looks good, but it's not. Boy, I thought that was through, but I guess it was wide to the left. The kick is no good. 3-10 left in the third quarter. The Scotties 21, the Falcons 15. Back after this message on WCLU Sports. We're here with Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, to guess what Dave's putting on Wendy's newest chicken sandwich. Call now. You're on the air. Rutabagas. Rutabagas are big. Not big enough. Hello? Anchovies. No. Dave, end the suspense. Well, I decided to go with something classy. So we're topping our whole chicken breast filet with three strips of bacon, melted Swiss, and a tangy sauce. And we're calling it Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. Mmm, Wendy's new Chicken Bacon Swiss. Hello? I'm telling you, rutabagas. I'll pass that along. At participating Wendy's for a limited time. Belcher's extra point try is no good. Jonathan says I want to kick him from the 27-yard line, Larry. Try a 37-yard extra point. He kicked a field goal just a moment ago or early at the end of the first half that tied it. Right now, the Scotties lead 21 to 15. Barrett Wright officially right on a run of three yards, two yards for the Scotties. And here we go, adventure time, whenever the Scotties kick off here. And the last time they kicked off, Monroe County, Gerald's bobbled it and lost it. Belcher will kick off. He'll angle the boot. High end over end kick. Let's see if Gerald's will drop it. Nope. He'll pick it up. Quick toss uh -oh. comes back to Tooley. Tooley cuts outside. Tooley's got it at the 30. Tooley at the 35. Tooley breaks another tackle. Tooley's at the 40. Tooley finally ridden out of bounds around the 30, Jonathan. 40 yard line, but we've got a flag at the 35, and that could be a hold or a clip. Jonathan Belcher knocked him out of bounds over there, the old kicker. Jonathan's about as quick as Tooley, isn't he? <laughs> Maybe with his golf swing, but not on his feet. Flag against Monroe County, and they're going to be penalized. Clip called against the Falcons. So, Larry, they're not going to get good field position. Gerald's tossed it back to Tooley. He tried to swerve to his left, let a wall set up on the far sideline. I thought the Scotties contained it pretty well. And, of course, that return is going to be nullified. 15-yard clipping call. So Monroe County has been hit by a couple of big penalties here in the third quarter. They'll start this drive at the 20. They've been penalized four times for 50 yards. Well, the Scotties played it real well that time. That's the thing that you have to do. When he gets the football in his hand, you just string him out to the sidelines and hope that somebody can get there and knock him, down, knock him out of bounds. First and 10 for the Falcons at the 20. Moving to your right. They've only had the football for a minute or two here in the second half. But Grace and company up to the line of scrimmage. Backfield is in the eye. Receiver split left and right. Gross hit Bartley. As the handoff from Grace comes to Tooley. Look out. Here there goes go. Tooley at the 40. Nobody at the 50. 45-40. 35-30. He'll go all the way for six points. And he can hit that home run. This game is tied at 21 on an 80-yard run by Tooley. Well, that's what he can do. And uh, that's what we're scared of. 2.48 left in the third quarter. Tooley, 80-yard run to that point. He had carried it eight times for 26 yards. Now nine carries, 106 yards. And if he escapes into that secondary, it's bye-bye. And this game tied at 21. Could take a one-point lead right here. 
One play, 80-yard drive. Just like that. Well, it's nice to have speed, isn't it? Oh, yes. No doubt about that. That's, uh, that's the greatest thing you can have in any sport is speed. I at 21. The Falcons crowd comes alive right here. Good ball game. That's, that's why they're so dangerous. Uh, you just can't tell when it's going to happen, and uh, we've held him in check all night up until that point. Here's a kick by Gerald. The kick is good. Just barely got it through. 22-21, Monroe County leading Glasgow. Back after this message on WCLU Sports. How many different bills do you pay each month? They all go to different places, so you have all those trips to make and all that money spent on postage, right? Not necessarily. The Glasgow Electric Plan Board wants to make your life easier. There are five different ways to pay your bill. Electricity and cable TV service are even itemized on the same bill. Pay at the drive through window, through the mail, at local banks, directly from your checking account with automatic bank draft, even Visa and MasterCard. Call them today for more information at 651-8341. Glasgow had held Monroe County in check, had held Tooley in check. The first seven times he touched, a, eight times he touched a football, he gained 26 yards. That's barely over three yards to carry. <laughs> then he got 80 the last time, and Monroe leads 22 to 21. Well, what did I say before the game? I said, if we let him go more than once, we're in trouble. And that's his once. 2.48 left in the third quarter. Monroe County 22, Glasgow 21. Gerald set to kick. Here's a boot. Deep kick that will drive Barrett right back to about the seven yard line. He's got it at the 10, right at the 15, right at the 20. Right, lateral pass comes to Gentry and goes out of bounds at the 15 yard line where Glasgow will have it first and 10. Good idea, Ty Gentry wide open over there if the pass is to him which it was backwards from where Barrett Wright was. He had plenty of room to run, but it, it was on the ground and went through his legs and out of bounds. The safe thing is it does go out of bounds. Yes. Monroe doesn't have a chance to pick it up. First and 10 for the Scotties at their own 15. But Larry, the complexion of this game switching to Monroe County side. Now the Scotties have to begin to move the football again. But they're going to start from probably the, well, not the worst field position they've had in this game. They drove 98 yards for their first score, but now they've got it at their 15, and you bet Monroe County's defense is going to be fired up has on the handoff. Driving up the middle is Barrett Wright to about the 16-yard line, and then he's hit hard. And I'm not sure that he got much on that play. A step beyond the 15, but that's it. Second and 10. Really no game. Bartley third stop of this contest. 22-21, but road leading Glasgow with 2.20 left in the third quarter. We need another one of those long, methodical drives that ends with some points on the board right here to take some time off the clock. And our best defense is keep the football. Monroe, six man front, and off Gentry. Cuts inside. Gentry works his way up to the 17 yard line, but that's it. Monroe County's defense fired up. Glasgow ran out of the double slot. But Scotty's faced with third and long at the 17, really the 16 yard line. Well, I'm sorry, they, I thought he got it up to about the 17 and they kept marking it back and it's just beyond the 15 yard line. John Turner's second stop. It's gonna be third and a long nine. That defense is tough. Glasgow's gotta have a big play right here. Monroe's gotta get it back with a bit of 34 left in the third quarter. Scotty's out of that double slot. Monroe, seven man front. As Baird Wright will try the little flea flicker to Michael Moore and Moore's gonna be busted back at the 12 yard line. Just took too long to develop that time, Larry. A little lateral, a little pass back from Barrett Wright to Michael Moore. And we've got an official's timeout. I don't see a flag on the play, but uh, Row County very boisterous celebrating loss of five on that pass play. It's going to be fourth and 15. Well, the umpire got caught in the shuffle right there. Oh, okay. And, and got knocked down, and he's a little woozy when he got up there. His hat fell off. And looks like he got hit up around the eyes. And the referee telling the Monroe County bunch to... It's time to be excited, but simmer down just a little bit. I don't know whether somebody slung around and, and, uh, and knocked him down when they made the tackle. Or, or he, he's hurting, I'll tell you that. He's, he's bending over there kind of woozy and wobbly right now. That's one other reason I wouldn't want to officiate. That's exactly right. you got to be careful when you're the umpire. You're behind the defense. You have to be very nimble and quick on your feet. Oh, Glass goes in some trouble right here, Larry. As Swords has got a punt from halfway in his end zone, and Burr's big Thule just chompy to get that football at the 35. Uh, it's hard to believe that one play can turn the thing around so much, but it has. They're going after it. Oh, they almost blocked it. They might have gotten part of that. He kicks it out of bounds around the 20, looks like around the 25-yard line. 
And Monroe Caddy's going to have it first and 10 at the Scotty 25. And now Glasgow's defense is going to have to be tough right here. Scotty's trailing 22 to 21. And Monroe Caddy's got all the momentum in the world on their side right here, Kaywood. Definitely so. Old Mo has really turned toward the Falcon side. And uh, those two possessions that we had on the two fumble recoveries and the missed blotch field goal attempt really loomed big. Right Glasgow now. scored on one of those. Yeah, one of them. And then Tooley races 80 two yards. Balls, I got a feeling that... Coach Pettit might want to give him the football the rest of the way as Grace on the quarterback keeper falls down. Now he'll pitch out. Oh, Tooley catches it. Oh. Tooley drops down at about the 22 well, on the had, option pitch to the left. We had we had it covered out there in 86 came in and, and, uh, and clipped <laughs> Brandon Chambers over there, but we don't get a flag out of it. Pickup of about three. It's going to be second and seven for the Falcons with 46 seconds left in the third quarter. And that stop was made by Richie Garzeron, his fifth. Falcons try to win the district championship. Glasgow trying to finish the regular season at 500. Falcons out of the eye formation. A receiver split left and right as Grace calling the signals. Grace handoff, Tooley breaks one tackle. Tooley moves it past the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, where he'll be about a yard or two short of the first down. Well, it's spotted back a little bit at the 16 and a half. And he'll be, well, he'll be about a yard short of the first down. It's going to be third at a yard. A big bust up the middle by Tooley. Clock winding down with 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Barrett Wright's fourth tackle. That's probably going to be the last play of the third quarter. And Monroe County is going to have a one-point lead headed into the fourth quarter. At the end of three quarters, it's Monroe County 22, Glasgow 21. Back hit one minute on WCLU Sports. To all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, Heck of a tune, isn't it? No one's been able to improve on that classic song about McDonald's Big Mac until now, that is. For starters, let's make it four all beef patties. Whoa, I've sung this before, man. It's two all beef patties. Yeah, but with this deal, you get two Big Mac sandwiches for just two bucks. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you know, four all beef patties all together. Oh, okay. Well, hit it, guys. Four all beef patties. Of course, that's going to take a couple of buns. Boy, these singers catch on fast, don't they? And you should, too, because those two luscious Big Mac sandwiches for just two bucks are for a limited time. After that, it's back to... So better come on into a participating McDonald's now. Plus, tax prices may vary. What you want is what you get. Hey, guys, could we make it those two Big Mac sandwiches you really want are what you get? Oh, no way, man. All right, just checking. At McDonald's today. Can't go changing everything. 14 Garrett Gold WCLU is Glasgow, Glasgow trailing by a score of 22 to 21. Larry, we're moving into the uh, fourth quarter of play. Monroe Caddy, with all the momentum as they lead by one point, they'll have the football. It's going to be third and about a yard for the Falcons. At the Scotty 16-yard line, the Falcons moving to your left in the fourth quarter. Glasgow to your right. Well, hopefully we're going to stop them here and don't let them get in the end zone. But if they do uh, and they score seven points, you know, it's not out of reach with the two-point conversion looming up there. But uh, we definitely need to hold them. Here's a handoff to Gerald's. He blasts his way inside the 10 down to about the 8-yard line off right tackle. Big hole on the right side. And he's got the first down for the Falcons. First and goal at about the Scotty 8. 11.54 left in this game. It's been a seesaw battle. About four lead changes. It's been a good one. Monroe County's on top 22-21. Terry Anderson's second stop. 5-9-172. Sophomore. Now let's see what the Scotty defense is made out of as Monroe County's got it first and goal at Glasgow's 8. Two wide outs on the right side, Gross, <coughs> excuse me, and Cloyd. Wood and Tooley in the I formation. Scotty's seven-man front as Grace gives a foot of ball to Tooley. Tooley blasts his way to about the five-yard line off right tackle. Squirmed his way for a pickup of about three, banging over the right side of the line with 11.26 left in this game. Picked up about three. Second and goal at the Scotty. Five. Stop made by Jeremy Poland. Poland's been active tonight defensively. His fifth tackle. This is one of his better football sure games. Sure is. Tonight. Jeremy's playing his last game. He's going. He's playing it well. Larry, the Scotties have played well in this game. They really have, in my opinion. I think they have too. Uh, you know, I don't. Few of the trick plays have gone awry here, and we haven't got anything done. And of course, the one big defensive play we didn't make on Tooley. Here comes Tooley. Tooley battling his way down to about the two or three yard line. Looks like about the two and a half. It's going to be third and goal. He was stacked up. If he cuts it to the outside, he's got an open lane for the score. But he was battling his way. Picked up about two. It's going to be third and goal 
from about the uh, two and a half close to the three yard line McNabb's third tackle I don't know that I would ever if I were coaching ever run Lorenzo Tooley inside I just pitch it to him and let him go outside every time and pick his way they may do it right here as Grace sets the ball club down out of the eye formation Grace on the handoff Wood battling his way down to about the one yard line where it's going to be fourth and goal. Argeron stripped it away, and here comes Richie heading the other way. But it, Wood was down, and here we go with the big fourth down play for both ball clubs. Fourth and goal, and the ball is at the one yard line, Larry. To barely inside the one yard line. Stop made by Michael Bragg. Timeout Time out on the field. Timeout called by Monroe County. County. 9.58 left in the fourth quarter. Monroe County with the football fourth and goal at the Scotty one yard line. It's Monroe County 22, Glasgow 21. Back after this one message on 14 karat gold sports. When you think of the name glass paving, there are several things you should associate with that name. Foremost is quality. Regardless of the size jobs the folks at Glass Paving set out to do, each one is approached with quality in mind. That's how they built their business, by making sure that every customer is pleased with their finished product. And right now, Glass Paving is ready to give you a quote on your paving needs. Call 651-3897 and see how easy it is to make arrangements for your paving job. Remember, there's no job too large or small, from driveways to parking parking lots to any sized road project. Give Glass Paving a call at 651-3897. Glass Paving in our new location at 2870 North Jackson Highway. Glass Paving. This is Matt Gum, WCRU Sports. Just got a score in for you. Barron County has scored the score seven to nothing over Grayson County. That's in the fourth quarter. Now back out to Jim Moody at Scotty Field. Thank you, Matt. 9.58 left in this game in Row County fourth. At about the one-yard line, they lead the Scotties 22 to 21. They've got two wideouts on the left side, Bartley and Gross. The I formation, Gerald's and Tule. Last goal, nine minutes the line of scrimmage. Here comes Gerald's, pushes his way. Does he get it? Yes. Touchdown to Monroe County. And Gerald's gives Monroe County a 28 to 21 lead with 9:53 left in this game. Now let's see if they'll try to kick the extra point, which would give them an eight-point lead. If they went for two, that it would be a two-possession game if they were successful. But it looks like Gerald's is going to try to kick the extra point. So the Scotty's still, Larry. If Gerald's is successful here in kicking the extra point, the Scotty's still with a chance to tie it if they score a touchdown and convert on the two-point play. And Gerald's will try to give the Falcons an eight-point lead. Grace will hold. Turner will snap. Good snap. Here's a kick. That looks like that's wide to the right, but it's good. Boy, I've missed every one that I've tried to call. <laughs> and it's Monroe County, I guess, wishful thank you more than anything. Yes. Monroe County 29, Glasgow 21, with 9.53 left in this football game. Back after this message on WCLU Sports. We're a part of the future. Monroe County 29, Glasgow 21. And the big play of this game, an 80-yard run by Lorenzo Tooley. Falcons lead by eight, but Glasgow not out of it, Larry, with almost 10 minutes to go in this game. That was the big play that uh, turned everything around. And Glasgow had momentum <laughs> going. Monroe County only had the football about five or six plays in the third quarter up until that point. And uh, that just changed the whole complexion of the ball game. Gerald set to kick off. Barrett right deep at the five-yard line. Here's a kick from Gerald. A little shorter at this end over in the boot. The right will take at the 11. Has it at the 15. Right at the 20. Right at the 25. Right cuts outside. Right battling his way up to about the 28-yard line where the Scotties will have it first and 10, knowing that they need to score on this drive and try to tie this game, trailing 29 to 21. 19-yard kickoff return. And making the stop was Eddie Gross. But the Scotties now have to move it. They moved it very well in the first half, but Monroe's defense against the run has been spectacular in the second half. First and 10. 
for the Glasgow Scotties. Running out of the double slot. Garjeron wide out on the left side. Quick throw to Garjeron, complete. Garjeron cuts outside. Has it near the 35-yard line. Safe pass, a good one from Michael Moore. And the pass completion will carry to about the 34-yard line. Pick up of about five or six. Second down for the Glasgow Scotties. And he is down at about the 34-yard line. So a pickup of about five yards, second and five, as Scotty McMillan makes his sixth tackle. And that was just a little out pattern. Uh, Richie on that left side over there at the end position makes a little five yard down and out. Good pass right on the money. Steer replaces Garjaron. Steer wide out on the left side. The backfield's in the double slot. Whitlow's a fullback now. And Roe County six man front as a handoff comes to Barrett Wright. Charges his way, blasting past the 35 up to about the 38 yard line. He'll be a yard. Short of the first down, a good yard, almost two. It's going to be third and one for the Scotties. At about the 38, stop made by Sean Shirley, his fourth. Here's a big third down play with 8.40 left in this football game. Third and a yard for the Scotties, just shy of the 38-yard line. Glasgow trailing 29-21, Monroe County. If the Falcons win, they'll claim the district championship. Glasgow's going to finish third as it is. Here come the Scotties out of a split look. Michael Moore calling the signals. Quick pitch comes to Barrett Wright. Breaks one tackle. Tries to break another, but he's going to be stopped back at the 37-yard line. No gain. He may have lost a yard on the quick pitch. And it's going to be fourth down for Glasgow High with 8-10 left in this game. Huffman and Clark report for the Scotties. Somebody, he did lose about a yard, Larry. It's back close to the 37, fourth and about two. Somebody just didn't get a good block on right there, and, uh, and Barry just couldn't get around the corner that time. It was a good play by John Turner stringing that thing out. Timeout, Scotties. 7.52 left in this football game. Their second timeout. Fourth and two for the Scotties at their own 37. Monroe County 29, Glasgow 21. Back after this message on WCLU Sports. We're here with Dave Thomas, founder of Wendy's, to guess what Dave's putting on Wendy's newest chicken sandwich. Call now. You're on the air. Rutabagas. Rutabagas are big. Not big enough. Hello? Anchovies. Nope. Dave, end the suspense. Well, I decided to go with something classic. So we're topping our whole chicken breast filet with three strips of bacon, melted Swiss, and a tangy sauce. And we're calling it Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. Mmm, Wendy's new chicken bacon Swiss. Hello? I'm telling you, Rutabagas. I'll pass that along. At participating Wendy's for a limited time. And this is Matt Gum, WCLU Sports Room. Got some scores to pass along to you. Tight games up in the other district. E-Town defeats LaRue County 21 to 20. And Fort Knox defeats Taylor County 16 to 10. So it looks like the Scotties will travel to Fort Knox next week to play those mighty Fort Knox teams. Now back out to Scotty Field and Jim Moody. Yep, they're good, Matt. They're always tough. Fourth and two for the Scotties, Larry. Scotties are going for it right here out of the... Double slot facing a six-man front as a handoff comes to Gentry. Gentry, he'll not get the first down as he stopped at the 37-yard line. Monroe County's defense has just been spectacular against the run. 7.47 left in this game, and Monroe County gets a football back. And they're looking to score a touchdown here that would put the nail in Glasgow's coffin. Well, I don't know why the officials are even thinking about it. Surely they're not going to measure this. The I ball think, is at the 37 and a half. Well, I think if Glasgow uh, requests one, they can, but it's uh, it's short, I think. Oh, there's no doubt it, that it's short. <laughs> and the, one of the uh, chain members of the chain gang lost the uh, stick <laughs> momentarily. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It's not even close, Larry. That, he's a yard, short. almost two yards short. Monroe County has really played with a lot of enthusiasm here in the second half. 29-21, Falcons with the lead, and now Glasgow's defense has to stop Monroe County to try to get it back to tie this game. They've got it at the Scotty 37-yard line, but 7.45 left, and the clock slowly but surely becoming an ally. Who made that stop for the Falcons? Do you? That was uh, number 68, Jeremy McClendon. That's his sixth stop tonight. Grace, the sophomore quarterback, who's done a solid job directing the attack. The I formation behind him. He's got receivers split left and right as he'll option it back to Tooley. Well, Tooley is stopped back at the 37 for no gain. Monroe County was fortunate. That ball had a chance to be lost, but they didn't. Tooley's dropped for no gain. In fact, he, well, he lost a half a yard, but it's going to be second and 10. Glasgow played the option well that time. Terry Anderson with the tackle. A little dangerous, a uh, little dangerous right there on Monroe County's part. That ball could have been very well easily fumbled and run back, but uh, they held on to it. 
And uh, if they do that again, maybe we'll come up with the turnover here. Come out of the eye formation. Receiver split left and right. Glasgow, six minutes at the line of scrimmage. On second and ten as Grace gives a foot of to Tooley. Tooley breaks past the 35. Tooley. Breaks another tackle. There's a clip. Tooley is going to go all the way for the score, Larry, but it's going to be called back. He'll score from 35 yards. Somebody clip Brandon Chambers, not Brandon Chambers, but uh, Todd Gentry right here, I think, Lorenzo in the back. Well, I mean, he is elusive. He is elusive. Have you seen a back with as much quickness as well, him? I haven't. I haven't seen one this year and haven't seen one in a long let me, time. Let me ask you to compare him to Dwayne Depp, because I never saw Dwayne Depp for the Scotties. I believe he's faster than Dwayne, but Dwayne Depp, uh, you know, he had good speed. He had a very good speed, and he was quick from side <laughs> to side. They were comparable runners, but I think Tooley's faster and just in the all out in the run. Uh, you can talk about Craig, Craig East up at Harrisburg, too. I didn't get right. to see him. Bruce uh, Trebu thinks that he is uh, a lot better running back than Tooley is. I don't, I don't know. I didn't get to see him. Well, I definitely think they're comparable. That's a 15-yard penalty on the clip. It's from the point of the foul, which does not help the Scotties. It's moved back to the 45, second and 17. Oh, I'm sorry. I called it a clip. It was a hold. Not fault. That's a 10-yard penalty. As it is, it's second and 17 from the point of infraction. High formation for the Falcons. The Scotties get a break right there, no doubt about it. Falcons at the Scotty 45 as Grace will drop back. Grace is going to throw. Long pass is going to be caught. Is it real to catch? It is. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Michael Moore, the free safety, didn't get over in time to, to pick that thing off. Uh, it was a sideline pattern, just a, one of those throws where you run under it, and Michael was just a little bit late getting over there. Eddie Gross caught that pass. Boy, a big play for the Falcons right there. 27-yard pass. Grace can throw that ball well. First and 10 at the 17 for Monroe County with 6.07 left in this game. 29-21, Monroe County looking for the clinching touchdown right here. They've got it at the Scotty 17. Glasgow's got to come up with the stop right here. High formation for the Falcons. Glasgow five man up front. Grace drops back. Oh, much play, but he's got to keep the football. He's got it at the 15. He's tackled at about the 10 yard line as he rolls downfield, and he picked up about seven. Boy, somebody didn't do a very good job on that left side for the Scotties, did they? You know, they got sucked inside, I think, on the pass rush, and uh, he saw that. Uh, Grace did and rolled out to the left and had plenty of room to run before Richie. I'm got not sure that was a straight quarterback keeper, though. Looked like there might have been a mix up in the backfield. He was supposed to hand off to somebody. Whatever it was, picked up seven yards, it second worked. and three. It did work. A 530 left in this game. And Rocati 29, Glasgow 21. High formation for the Falcons. Receiver split left and right. It's Grace calling the signals. Unbalanced line to the left. Grace drops back, gives it to Tooley. Tooley escapes a tackler, and he scores for Monroe County. Oh, he's quick. Mobile, just about any kind of adjective you could ascribe him, and it's 35 to 21 to Monroe County. And that's going to put the big hurt on the Glasgow Scotties with 5.15 left in this game. Tooley scores on a 10-yard run. 15 carries, 130 yards. 80 yards on a touchdown run in the third quarter. Here come the Falcons. And Larry, they can feel it right now. They can feel that district championship. Yeah, they've uh, that pretty well sewed it up right there. Well, so Scotties can score quickly and recover an onside kick. Here's Gerald's. He'll try the extra point. A kick from Gerald's. I don't know. That's good. Perfect. Monroe County 36, Glasgow 21, 515 left in this game. We'll return after this message on WCLU Sport. Time was when a bank wanted to thank you for your business. They gave you a toaster or a mixer or something else you could use. At New Farmers National Bank, what we think you could really use is a vacation. And like the toaster and the mixer, it's free when you take advantage of a loan for any purpose at NFNB. These are family vacations to one of five fabulous resorts. Enjoy the fun and sun at the Radisson on Hilton at Island, the glitz of the Las Vegas Flamingo Hilton, the 
the blues and views from New Orleans Clarion Hotel, the vacation paradise at the Hilton Inn Gateway in Orlando, or the Smoky Mountain Splendor of the Edgewater in Gatlinburg. It's your choice, just for taking advantage of a new loan at New Farmers. Minimum loan balance and term along with other requirements. Find out the full story from any loan officer at New Farmers National Bank or call 651-6141 and get something you can really use, a free family vacation from New Farmers National Bank, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Gerald set to kick for the Falcons. Here's the boot. Deep end over end kick. The DeVere right takes it about the eight yard line. Has it at the 10, at the 15, right at the 20. Right cuts to the outside. Looks for some running room, brings it up to about the 30 yard line where the Scotties will have it first and 10. And they've got to score to hurry, Larry. With 5.06 left, they've got to bust a big play very quickly. Barrett Wright, 21-yard return, and Eddie Gross, fifth stop. You know, Monroe County is not a senior-dominated team. They're going to have a lot of kids back next year. Yeah, they sure are. Both I their quarterbacks. I looked at the, at the roster. They'll lose a few, but not many. First and 10. Scotty's at the 30. Well, as long as you got the speed back, that's, a, that's about all you need. And he's coming back for his final season next year. Let's go out of the double slot. Michael Moore calling the signals. Moore drops back. Little pass in the flat is hidden complete. Looked like it was intended for Brandon Chambers out of the backfield at the 34. He was defended well by James Ford, number 24. Passes incomplete, second and 10 with 444 left in this game. Michael had a lot of pressure on him. Uh, John Turner, number 50, came right up the middle right at him, and he had to unload it before he wanted to. Speed kills. And it's, uh, as we expected, it, uh, it has helped Monroe County in this game. Glasgow's really played well, and they played hard. As uh, the handoff up the middle, here's Barrett Wright charging his way past the 35, up to about the 36-yard line. But 4.35 left in this game. So Barrett Wright picks up about six. Glasgow really moved the ball well in the first half, Larry, but Monroe's right against the defense, or defense against the run's really been good in the... Second in the second half, pickup of about six, third and four. Gerald sixth tackle. Yeah, it's the same story that's been uh, the story in a lot of football games for Glasgow this year. Excellent first half, and then wear down in the second half and don't get much done. Out of the double slot, third and four for the Scotties. Monroe shows a five-man front. Michael Moore calling the signals. Moore, good block. Here's a pass complete to Garzeron. Immediately dropped, but he's got the first down at the 41 with 4.01 left in this game. Nice catch by Garzeron and a nice hit that time by a Falcon. Did Gross get him or Shirley? Shirley, number 15. About a five-yard pass completion. First and 10, but the Scotties don't have any time to lag around with 4.01 left, trailing 36 to 21. Got to get it on down the field some way, uh, and more than likely that's going to be with the pass. Four minutes to go in this game. Barrett Wright, 26 carries, 143 yards. But he had most of his yardage in the first half. He had over 100 yards in the first half. Out of the double slot, Michael Moore drops back. Here's a pass. It is going to be incomplete. I don't know if it was Garzeron or Chambers. It looked like it might have been Garzeron, the intended receiver. Both were in the vicinity at the Falcon 40. But the pass was incomplete, out of bounds. A second and 10 with 3.43 left in this game. Well, Richie Garzeron was doing a down and out an up pattern and uh, Brandon Chambers came from the left side and flooded the zone over here and the pass was right in between them. Uh, neither one of them could catch it because it was out of bounds. Second and 10 at the 41 for the Scotts. If the Glasgow led 21-15, they've been outscored 21 to nothing. Big plays for the Falcons. Out of the double slot, Michael Moore, quick pass complete to Gentry. Gentry, though, wrapped up after maybe a yard pass completion. Monroe's defense pretty tough and quick, and they, they cover that play well. Gain of about a yard, second and nine, with 3.30 left in this game. Well, if the score holds up here, it looks like uh, the Scotties will go to Fort Knox. Scotties are going to Fort Monroe Knox. Monroe County will host E-Town. Is it's that going, correct? That's right. You're right, Scotty McMillan's seventh stop. And they will both, and, they, and that will be one bracket, am I correct? That's right. Well, I'm not sure if it's E-Town or Taylor County. Larry, E-Town beat Taylor County in the regular season. Taylor County defeated LaRue County. I'm not sure. It's going to be third and nine for the Scotties. As Michael Moore rolls out to his right, he'll look to throw the home run. Here's a pass, but it's going to be incomplete. Boy, tipped, dropped by Hull, and Richie Garcheron almost caught it off the ricochet. Fourth and nine for the Scotties with 2.55 left in this game. Well, the pass was right there. It was just uh, uh, the defensive man got the hand on it, and that's... Uh, why Richie couldn't get couldn't catch it. 
Fourth and nine. Senior not here at a Glasgow High. Started out well, and Glasgow had the lead in the third quarter, Larry, but it's been all Monroe County after Tooley's 80-yard run. Yeah, that, uh, that was the play that broke her back, changed the momentum, and it just seemed like uh, Monroe County get, you know, got fired up. And when, when he runs a long one like that, that's, that's what happens. And tonight it really killed the Scotties. They're out of the Scotties, out of the double slot against a four-man of front as Michael Moore hops back to his right. Moore, pass over the middle, caught by Barrett right at midfield. Right. Oh, as he tried to get that last bit he of yardage, he's going to be close to a first down at the 49. I don't know if he got it or not. Well, he had it, and I don't know whether he lost it or not, but it's going to be awfully close. I mean, I, I don't know that he got that. From here, it looks like he may be a little bit short, but that's I'm not it, sure. That's the way it looks from here, but uh, we've been wrong before. I think I've been wrong just about anything that I've said tonight. 244 left in this game. And I hope you're wrong here. Well, I hope I am, but I I think he's going to be a little bit short. No, he's I'm not. wrong. He got it he's, by he got it nose by. of the football. I knew he actually had it. I just <laughs> used my reverse philosophy. First and 10 for the Scotties at the Falcon 49, but Larry, the clock is a factor here. Only 244 left in this game, and Glasgow really is going to have to hit the uh, home run to pass yes. very soon. The Scotties only have one timeout left also. Right of the double slot, Clark. Along with Barrett Wright as Michael Moore's going to try the long pass, intended it for, guard, for Gentry. Catch. No, intercepted at the 35-40, 45-50. At the 45-40, and driven out of bounds as a defensive back at the 40-yard line. I think that pass was picked off by Scotty McMillan. That's right, number 33. And he returned it about 36 yards, and that's going to do it for the Glasgow Scotties. And the Monroe Caddies, I'm really been impressed with the Monroe Caddies' defense in the second half, Larry. They bent a little bit. They gave up one touchdown, but they've only surrendered six points. And Monroe County... With 221 left is going to win this football game. They've got it first and 10 at the Scotty 39. Well, Larry, size up Monroe County for me. Size up Monroe County versus Allen County. The two, those two teams. Monroe beat them by four. Well, uh, Allen County kind of dominated that football game, though, but they just didn't put it in the end zone. Uh, they're two comparable teams. I think Allen County's stronger up front than it looked like than Monroe County is, but Monroe has the speed. Here's Tooley. He's driven down after, well, he got nothing on that play. Nice tackles. He tried to move left to Scotty. Got him. McNabb's fourth tackle. Well, what about Monroe County in the state playoffs? Do you think they could get to the regional championship? I think it's very possible. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we're going to be in the same bracket with them, Fort Knox. Uh, and they're going to play either E-Town or Taylor. Right. King, correct. That's I right. think they can handle either one of those two, E-Town or Taylor County, and then it'll come down to either us or Fort Knox. I think they have a, a definite uh, uh, advantage. They're going to be playing at home if they win their first ball game. Here's a handoff to Gerald's. Gerald's uh, rolled down at about the 39-yard line as he moves it off right tackle with a minute 35 left in this game. They're a good football team, but they would uh, probably be just a, a regular old average football team if not for uh, Lorenzo Tooley and their speed. He's got... He's carried it 16 times for 129 yards. Their quarterback has played awfully well. He's a sophomore. This is his first start. He came in and played last week uh, uh, against Russell County and did a good job, and he's done an excellent job here tonight. Third and 10 for the Falcons at the 39 with a minute six left in this game. High formation for Monroe County. They've got two wideouts on the left side, leading Glasgow 36 to 21. Josh Grace ends it off to Tooley. Tooley breaks one tackle. Look at Tooley scoot through as he moves it down to about the 30-yard line. He'll be a yard short of the first down. It is at the 30, and I believe he's just about a yard short with 45 seconds. And Rowe will have to run one more play here on fourth at about a yard. He was driven down by Barrett Wright. Well, Larry, I know it's uh, disappointing for these seniors tonight here at Glasgow High, their yeah. final game here. Yeah, it sure is. It's always disappointing when you lose. It doesn't make any difference whether it's your last one or your first one, but it's definitely uh, a sad way to go out, and uh, they'll remember it for a long time. 24 seconds left. Fourth at a yard for the Falcons at the Scotty 30 as they line up out of the I formation. Josh Grace. Gives a football to Gerald. Gerald's racing past the 20, down to the 15. Still on his feet at the 5, and he's taken down at about the Scotty 5-yard line with 8 seconds to go. Poland may have stopped him, did he? He did, Jeremy Poland. All right. Gerald's 25-yard burst up the middle. Gerald's has carried it six times for 50 yards. 
With eight seconds to go, but Rochetti will have it first and goal at the Scotty five-yard line. Well, let's see if they're going to rub it in right here and try to score. Oh, they, they're breaking the huddle quickly with four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Grace snapped. it all. Grace gives it to Gerald's. No, that wasn't Gerald's. Who was that? That was uh, Shirley. Shirley. And the game is over. Well, Monroe County tried to get that last touchdown with three seconds left, didn't they? They sure did, and we'll remember that. Sometime down the road. As it is, Monroe County beats Glasgow. Monroe County's got an outstanding football team. They've won the district championship, and Monroe County wins against Glasgow 36 to 21. It's Monroe County's day, and the Falcons speed to kill. I thought Glasgow really whipped them up front in the first half, particularly on offense, but their their defense against the run got tough in the second half, and Thule took over. Yeah, they, they did something at halftime, uh, brought more people to the line of scrimmage or, or did something different on defense than they were doing in the first half. They really stopped the run. Barrett Wright had an excellent first half, and in the second half, it didn't get a lot done. Uh, of course, uh, Lorenzo Tooley broke away for the long run. I think that was the uh, the play of the football game. That turned the momentum after Glasgow had gone ahead, uh, put Monroe County back on top. And from that point on, uh, the emotion was on Monroe County side, and it kind of drained the Scotties. And when, it, when that happened, it was all uh, the Falcons the rest of the football game. <laughs> All right, Larry. What about the Scotties now? They've got Fort Knox next week. Well, uh, definitely, I think it's a football game that you can probably win. We haven't had a lot of success against Fort Knox, only beaten them a couple times. Uh, up there, we did win one big one one year to go to the state finals. Uh, it won't be a, it'll be a familiar place for us to go. There's no doubt about that. But I think it's a game that we possibly could win because I don't think Fort Knox is, is that strong. And we usually play against people a little bit better that don't know us. And they've lost their best running back, who has a lot of speed like Thule. Derek Homer tore a ligament in his knee, and he is out. Well, I'm sure they'll still have a good competitive oh, football oh, game. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, but I think Glasgow can't let this, you know, we were going to be third no matter what tonight. This just put us in a different bracket. Uh, it's away from Bullet East, too, which doesn't hurt anything if you do happen to win a few football games. Uh, and we'll have to go Monroe County if we were to win and they were to win instead of going to Allen County if they were to win and we were to win. So, uh, you know, it's a toss-up who you want to play Allen or who you want to play Monroe if you win a football game. So it, it really didn't hurt the Scotties. They gave a valiant effort. They gave a good effort. Uh, it was just a little bit too much speed for us tonight. The final score, Monroe County 36, Glasgow 21. Back in two minutes on. WCLU Sports. Calvert and Dunn Insurance not only offer a variety of policies, but are exceptional in their customer service and up-to-date quotes. Contact Vicki Bartley and her staff for any of your insurance needs. Calvert and Dunn Insurance is next to the Plaza Theater in downtown Glasgow. <laughs> 